little bit uh, and uh, be able to get in some single stuff and, and add few people to practice at a time. And these are the kinds of things that they'll be able to do soon. So I want I want them to see. I mean, I can do it all day long, but they're like, oh, well, uh, and uh, be able, he should be able to do it no matter what. Right. Uh, you know, but, you know, for everybody else, you guys are relatively new and, you know, it's you know, you, you're not authorized. You just authorized before before COVID. Right. So you're brand new as well. And, uh, you know, this will give everybody a kind of a view of how you guys come along through our practice a little bit. And then we'll just talk, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit and then we'll have, uh, um, is she still here? I don't see her. We're live. Uh, Elfwin disappeared. Uh, disappeared. So we're gonna have Bess bring us through her shoulder stuff. Okay. And then uh, if uh, Elfwin comes back, we'll have her bring us through some of her uh, rolling shoulder stuff. Uh, but first, we'll start with you guys, uh, just to show people where we would like to get to. Who are we starting with? Uh, Kitsia and Ksenia and. All right. All right. There we go. Hi guys. All right. You're up. So just then, you guys can go ahead and do this. Um, just so everybody knows, both of these both these guys just started with us, uh, and they actually started a little later with us in uh, in the Zoom stuff. Uh, they. Uh, uh they just really started getting into fighting a little bit ago and uh, they first week was last week they came out uh we've been we've been able to see uh others you know Siverit and William do this a little bit um but they have a you know they they've been well <laughs> at least Siverit's been uh authorized for many years um these two are really just starting to get in but you can see how they're working back and forth with each other a little bit and just following the flow and doing stuff. Go ahead, guys. You can go ahead and just, yep, there you go. So without pads, they're just going to, you can see that they're kind of, you see how they're tracking each other constantly? So they're not even talking together, just, just working on tracking back and forth. This is what the change in your hips and the understanding of tying in with your opponent allows you to do with another opponent as you're fighting them. This is really important for range control. So as you develop the idea is to tap into your opponent and when they're coming, you go, when they go, you come and, and you keep that range and you can follow that flow in the fight a lot more. And that, and that gives you the ability to find shots and create shots and create tension and pressure. And this is, thanks guys, that was great. This is, this is the kind of thing that, um, you know, as you get other people to do stuff with, this is the kind of stuff that you kind of want to, introduce into that practice a little and you can start feeling that that motion with somebody and tapping into that connection being connected to your opponent is one of those things that's very hard to train um but it's something you have to understand right and you can see now they're doing a little bit of movement and trying to find timing and throwing um you know, these are all things that we don't really practice much. We, we don't practice throwing as we move. It's a really bad habit, in fact, of a lot of times we walk and then we stop and then we throw and then we walk and we stop and set up and throw. If you're able to throw in the movement, you're going to stay ahead of what your opponent's able to do. And that's that's one of the big things that uh, we've been adding through through this whole COVID thing is that you know, rarely did we ever work with pads like this before, but they're really a great, great tool to work with because what happens in those scenarios is now you can go sideways and backwards. You notice how they're practicing even into the 45s, they're practicing throwing back and forth. And what that does is it creates the ability for you to mimic your opponent and stay connected and find that spot and there it is, bang. And then you keep moving because you don't have to stop to throw a blow. Right. These that's where ultimately we're trying to get to. And what happens in those scenarios is because you understand your center now, you notice that they're always straight up and down and they're just you can just move constantly. You, we, we, you know how to change. You know how to push that hip back a little bit or push it forward into an angle or push it forward into that other angle. So all of a sudden this becomes much easier comparatively to to where we were before. 
right? We have small feet. We're just working. Let those feet just flow. If you if you look here, it's just here I am. I'm just letting those feet be nice and small, and I'm just working. I don't care if they cross. I don't care if they go back. I don't care if they go forward. It's as long as you understand where your opponent is and where you are, then you can control that range and how what they're doing to you. So. This is part of that flowing movement that we're really looking. I'll find your back. Um, this is part of that flowing movement that we're really looking uh, forward out of everybody in the future. And I'm hoping uh, when you guys all get back to uh, fighting, and I apologize for you guys, when you all get back to fighting, um, let me know. I, I really want to know how this feels in your fight, how that connection and that motion with your opponent feels in the fight. Um, you know, I think what you're really going to find is it allows your body to stay up more, you know, you know, more stacked. It allows you to, to, to keep your, your swords in the right angles all the time. It allows you to keep your defense in the right angles. All of these little things kind of add up to just make you a better fighter. And that's where we're really trying to go. We're trying to help you understand, you know, where that place is that, you know, it, it's not going to be automatic. You're not going to all of a sudden like, hey, look at my superhero footwork. I'm behind you now, right? <laughs> that's that's not how it's going to work. And in fact, it's very hard to get behind somebody. There's a lot of timing into pushing them one way and then sliding to the other way. But the, the piece is you have all the tools now and you can use these tools to develop your fight. And that's that's really, after all of this, that's what your next step is going to be is how you're going to, you have all tons of new tools to learn how to develop a better fight for yourself. So, um, but I think we're pretty good uh, to go today. Um, so let's go ahead and start with uh, Beth. Can you go ahead and do do your shoulder stuff? Sure thing. Also, we're going to have you add yours right after hers again, if you don't mind. Thank you. So once again. Uh, I use a Tropicana juice bottle filled with water. It gives me about 10 pounds. You can use whatever you want. Weights, kettleball, uh, jug of milk if you're in the States. Uh, just bend over and you're letting it hang lightly from your shoulder, just hanging. You're not using it at all. And just start with swings. And I'm using my body to make my arm go. I'm not moving the shoulder. I'm moving my body and that makes the shoulder and the arm swing. And I'm starting off with circles. And I'll, they're medium sized circles, about the size of uh, one of the rungs on my ladder, the one of the squares. Do it, you know, a dozen times. This is about enough. I get bored. Then go the other way. And again, let your body move your shoulder and your arm. You're stretching out your joints. And then one foot in front for me, back and forth. And I'm just rocking back and forth, letting, letting the joint go. Seems good to me. My shoulder is feeling comfortable. And now I'll just go sideways. And again, just stretching out. It's a nice stretch for your shoulder. I find it comfortable. It, it makes my shoulder feel happy. Yeah, I would totally agree. I really like that uh, all the stuff you guys have added to here. I, uh, I got to use these 30 years ago. You and me both. Okay, and just switch your arms. This is my good shoulder, so I, I do less here. Uh, the other shoulder is the one I had the surgery on. So this is just, I do it on this shoulder so that I never have surgery on this shoulder. Okay, and I'll just switch the other way. And then forwards and backwards. and sideways. And I'm gonna show you one more stretch after this. Awesome. So 
No, I haven't done with this. I'm bored. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there is, we're all accustomed to doing this stretch and it's a good stretch. You know, it stretches at the back. When you've had rotator cuff surgery, as many of us have, uh, one of really good stretches, just put your arms sideways, level with your shoulders and pull it back. And by God, I feel the stretch where they reattach the ligaments. So just hold it back, arm level. And you're trying to push your arms back, squeeze your shoulder blades, whatever works for you. So hold it for, you know, 15 seconds or however long I've been talking <laughs> and relax. And then do it again. With all stretches, you want to go slowly. Your muscles have what's known as a stretch reflex. And you'll sometimes see people like if they're doing stretches, like they bounce. Don't bounce because your muscles want to tighten up. That's that stretch reflex. And then if you pull them, you're not actually stretching them. You're pulling on a contracted muscle and, or, and tendons. And that's not something that you want to do. So just back as, as, as you can. And I can certainly feel this one. Oh yeah, believe me, I can get it in both my shoulders. Across the front, right? Where they attach? Dang. Yeah. All right, there you go. That's your shoulders. A good part on that one is I know this was one for my shoulders. Um, there, we'll switch screens real quick. Is um, if you have the rubber, uh, like the therapy bands, is connect them to something. What happens is we overdevelop our front muscles here and it rolls your shoulders forward. So what ha you, you get this rolling forward. You see my shoulders are back here and they roll forward here. And then, I'll, and then we get this from typing. We get this from sitting at a desk. Um, we roll our these shoulders and then they stay there and then you don't have a natural roll in your shoulders. So you have to be really careful. I have, you can tell yourself when you stand, in, in, if you stand up, and you're, you can see the back of your hands pointing to the person. That means that your shoulders are literally, you can see this, you can hold them. Your shoulders are literally rolled forward. A normal person, you should see their thumbs. So as you roll this back, you notice your hands, your thumbs should be out here. And this is where your actual pose, this is where you actually should be. So it's with, about turning. right, without, it's not about turning your hands, it's just take your shoulders and roll them back a little bit. Right, and, and this is where you should be. And what you can do to develop the, the, the muscles between those shoulder blades to get you back into normal is literally just these rows, right? You, you put it on a, on a door frame, you put it, tie it to a pole or your pel, whatever, and, and you just pull, it's, it's these rows are, and you squeeze those back. So those shoulder blades come together and add, add three sets of those to your, to your normal day of working out and that'll redevelop that back. You, you, I literally saw my hands go from the fronts all the way back here after working for working out for about three months. So the other thing is, if you want to just do it with milk jugs, you can just do a bent over row. Just lean your bend over the waist and bring it back the same way. Exactly. So just be aware of that um, because because most of us work on computers now, so you'll get that natural roll. You just have to work those up. All, all right. What's next? Elfwin. Yeah, this was exactly what I was about to say is you just kind of stand in front of the mirror and shake yourself out. And like you say, if you see the backs of your hands, you got your underdeveloped on the back. Um, so, and uh, again, with the stretches, dynamic stretches or short term, like Bess was saying, 15 seconds, if you sit in there for a couple minutes before a practice, or before you work out, you just stretch out all your muscles and now, now they're not gonna work properly. So keep those long stretches for after the your workout and do short or dynamic before. So getting the uh, getting the torso warmed up, which was my problem last week. I went and wrenched my back. So just some gentle twists. Not very fast because you're because you're not uh, you don't want to overstress it. Just but make sure you get a good long range of motion. Sometimes I'll put my arm back and that'll get the stretch across the pecs. And don't just rotate at the waist. Make sure you're rotating right down to your ankles because your whole body is going to be going this way. 
Sometimes I do this when I hear my knees, my ankles pop. Okay, and sideways. So just go bend to the side, reach down, try to touch your knee. You can't see on my camera. You get all these, I can't remember the intercostals or whatever, the ones up your rib cage. And one big point for everybody is remember that it, you know, sometimes you just don't have the time to do all these or don't feel it. Make sure at least you do the ones you know where you have a problem or that you're stiff or had the problem a week before. Concentrate on those. So even if it's like, oh, my back's been hurting, then concentrate on these exercises. Yeah. Something else. Um, Bronis was laughing at me because I had my tennis ball out. Yes, I, um, I do a bit of MFR, so myofascial release. Uh, before working out. So that's just taking a, a soft ball, like a tennis ball. Oops. And what I'll do is I'll lean up against the wall, put it up, you'll find that sore spot right above your, above your pelvis. And you just lean against the wall and you roll it around, you'll find those spots. And that'll get those muscles to, uh, to relax a little bit. So that, because if you've got tight muscles and then you try to turn, you're pulling on, you basically you got a knot in a rope and then you're pulling on, on your rope. So that's going to create a, a, a stress point that you can, act, that's where you're going to hurt yourself. Um, so where were we? All right, some shoulder swings. I wish I could do these. Nice and big. Just do a small bird. <laughs> terrible. Maybe where? 10 or 12 in one direction. Back the other way. Nice big motions in those shoulders. Now we're up into the shoulders or up into the neck. So turning the head side to side. Chin to shoulder. My big thing when we're getting back into fighting is wearing a helm again for the first time in a year and a half. How's my neck gonna handle it? So let's keep that relaxed, side to side. Again, when we spend all our day on the computer or on the cell phone, all of these muscles are going to be tightened up because you're so used to being all scrunched up. So getting your neck moving again. The good part is, is that we all get to learn these. So even if it's something you don't have to do, it may be something that somebody you're working with has to do. So, you know, take, remember that you know, as you go through these, try to remember these because these are really good exercises when you have somebody you're training with. Yeah. Um, something I actually had, we were talking about the, uh, the shoulders rolling forward. That's a posture thing. Um, and that was a huge problem I had with my fighting for a good 15 years before I figured out that's what the problem was. Um, especially when, when you're fighting and somebody's coming at you and your instinct is to get small, right? So I would scrunch up and that rolls the shoulders forward. So now the deltoid muscle isn't working anymore. All that stress is now going through the rotators. And so I'd be halfway through a tourney and my shoulder would be done. I couldn't hold my shield up anymore. And all it took was a posture change, make sure those shoulders stay back. And I haven't had a problem since. And I pointed it out to a couple other people. I've been watching them. They go, oh, my shoulder hurts. And I watch and I see, yep, they're doing the same thing. So how you, 
How you're standing those biomechanics can be absolutely critical in your fighting career. And it can be just a small thing like that. It's not even an injury. It's just how you're, how you're standing, how you're moving, and it can completely wreck your career. Yes. All right, back to my favorite club routine. Yeah, one of these days I'll get this one right. I feel like best doing this one. Yeah, I, I keep meaning to, to do, uh, do up some diagrams on it, and I keep not doing it. I was had a busy busy week at work. Um, so anyway, in front, shoulders or uh, elbows at ninety. Let's do it from the side. So elbows ninety. You're gonna rotate the shoulder ninety. Rotate out. Extend the arm. Rotate 180 straight down, bend the elbow, and rotate back out, and we're back to the beginning. So these are all just. Oh my God. You guys wouldn't want to hear my shoulder. <laughs> Mine does Rice Krispies every time. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, poor sides is like, ooh. Yeah, and I really recommend, I mean, this is a Persian club or an Indian club routine, um, found it off the internet, modified it for me a little bit. Um, and, you know, you can do these exercises with some pretty heavy weights, but like I was saying, as soon as you're using a heavy weight, um, now it's your deltoids that are working. And what I want to stretch out here and get warmed up are your rotator muscles. Those are the little guys that, you know, we they get isolated so much, so they get hurt. So I like to use a lighter weight when I'm using these with actual clubs. Um, the clubs weigh, you know, maybe half a pound more than my sword does. And if you're having trouble, just shorten up so the weight's closer to your hand. If it's easy, go long. Now you got a bigger lever arm. Do that a couple times and then go backwards. So you're in the front, rotate down. Now you got to work against gravity. This is a good one for the, your for your shoulder, for your elbow and your wrist as well. I wouldn't recommend going too fast. I've beaten myself in the back of the head a couple of times. <laughs> I'm going to do this on the other side. <laughs> I agree, it's a creepy noise. That's <laughs> my <laughs> Yes. If you feel a little more comfortable, you can start putting a little bit of a weight transfer, a little bit of a torso twist into it, you're turning your body with the club. You can do this with two, but you have to get the timing down. Yeah, giving I don't have the timing for one. Yeah, <laughs> it was a while before I tried to. Well, My cats are outside, so I don't have to worry about beaning them because I've done that before too. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Dad's like, hey! Yeah, they weren't too happy. <sighs> Now, the worst one was the one who liked to climb my pal. Oh, that's not good. Well, I just started a nice big raft and she stuck her head out from behind the pal going, what you doing? <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So now, oh, yeah, these are good. I like yeah, these. Uh, yeah, this is the little mace one. Yeah. So one hand above the other, baseball bat style. Back of the hand heads towards that ear. So if you have your right hand up, you're going to be going past your left ear first. 
back, move the head off. Nice deep stretch down the back. This is what you're trying to do is get this big stretch down the back, get your shoulder and chest warmed up. Feel it in your sternum. Rib cage all moving. So again, I'll go through it a little slower. You can be dropping the weight over your shoulder. All right, so you're coming pretty much down your spine. You should be able to do this standing next to a wall, right? So if you're doing, you know, big lasso type, that's not what I'm looking for. Because what we're trying to get basically is trying to get your hands down your back. You'll feel that in your triceps. You'll feel it all down your, down your rib cage. Do that maybe 10 times. And switch hands and go the other way. And you do it with a heavier weight, like if you did this with a sledgehammer or something, you'd really feel that pull down the back. But I like doing this, you, you get the same kind of a stretch. And this is the kind of warm up you could do at a practice or before a tourney or something. Exactly. I guess the key yeah. is for everyone is to warming up those shoulders will take a lot of injury away in the long run. Yeah, just yeah. these simple swinging exercises, the full motion exercises, all of those things help you a ton in keeping the muscles from loosening the muscles before you're literally shocking them into positions with fast throws. So yeah. that, that, that becomes one of the biggest issues of what we see is that we, we shock the muscle, which is already tight, and then we're we're throwing it super fast, and it, it, at that point, it freezes up, and then you're using other areas instead of your muscles to do things. So yeah, learn from us old injured guys. Do these first. I, I, I believe me. Even if you and and I do stuff all the time. I do a lot of stretches uh, because of sciatica. I do some sciatica stretches and and work those out. And I don't do them all the time, but. You know, it's like when I can feel it coming, I know exa exactly when it's coming. I'll start doing them for three or four weeks. Yeah. And it takes it right away. So it's not something, you know, beware. It's, it, it, it's you, you would, if you have the time, do them, especially before tournaments. In practice, you're probably a little, have a little bit more time to warm up. But in before tournaments, try to get some, you know, least slow work with your shoulders in. It's actually going to help your fighting in the long run. So, yeah. um, so, so beware of that. Uh, um, Alfred, next week, I wanna, I, I'm gonna show, if you don't mind, I'd like you, uh, I'll, I'll have everybody uh, maybe get a ball um, and I'd like you to show, go ahead and switch back to it real quick. Uh, we're not gonna do it this week, everyone, but here's a great exercise that you can do if you have a wall to do this and it's gonna be in the house. Uh, and it's, it's something boxers do a lot. And it, it builds hand eye coordination. Yeah. And and it, it's great for reflexes. Yeah. So I do this before uh, fight practice, you know, I'm waiting for everybody else to show up. And I just have a tennis ball and I just bounce it against the wall. Right. And that gets that's that chain for throwing the shot is the exact same chain for throwing a ball. Right. And actually, so so go ahead and show how you're catching with you change up hands you're catching with sometimes and things like that. Yeah. I so earlier. I'm a little restricted because the room's small. Um, and I'll do this in the gym too as a warm up. So I usually I usually go underhand. I'll throw a couple overhands just to get them just to get the chain warmed up. Um, and then underhand, what I'm doing is I'm catching with the opposite hand that I threw from. And then because I'm bouncing off of the same spot, I have to move because the ball is basically going back and forth and I'm stepping from one side to the other, catching it. So it's.
So if anybody's ever seen the boxers, there's a little trick they use out there. It almost looks like a, a game of the paddle pong scenario, but they, they wear a ball, like literally a, a strap on their head, and then they'll punch this ball as they're, they're working out. This is what it's doing is it's building coordination inside between your hand, your mind, and your movement all at the same time. So just the simple ball routine is something you can just pop it against the wall, change it up, pop it against the wall, change it up. You can throw it on the floor and catch it as it's bouncing up. Those little things build those engagements in your body. So, and, you know, body to mind type of scenario. So think about that, throw a tennis ball in your bag. Uh, tennis ball can do a lot of stuff, including, you know, if you're having some impingement or muscle stuff like uh, as one's talked about the earlier, it's like you can lay on it, you can roll on it. And so it's a great way to help if your feet start, start having issues, roll on my roll them in your feet and stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, a tennis ball or a workout ball is great. Rubber ball is great for those kinds of things. All right, let's go through our, uh, our feet stuff real quick. All right, everybody knows these. So let's, uh, this is, again, so what we're working here, uh, later on, if you feel like you want to add a little more to these, you can add, you can put some weight in your hand, you can use those same uh, milk jugs or, or whatever, and you can hold them out in front of you, and we're doing just flat foot squats, right? So put your arms out, So if, but if you ever want to add more weight to it, you're more than welcome. But even bodyweight squats are, are core to making sure that you can take care of of yourself and your body, right? Ooh, those are some cracks. Or really, if you just work up to doing a bunch of these body weight squats in your full armor with a yep. helmet on. Yeah, go with the helmet on. Holding your sword and shield, that's yep. what you're gonna have to do in fighting. And if you can squat all the way down and up a bunch of times, you don't need to do it more than a couple times at, at once in a fight, so. Exactly. And again, here, what we're doing is we're warming up those legs, right? Warming up those knees. All right. So next one again, let's go ahead. And this one, we're going to go all the way up. We're going to stay on our toes. We're going to keep a nice straight back. And we push up, push up on those toes really high until you're literally on your toes. I'm hoping you guys actually feel yourself change now where you can feel like the difference between the ball of your foot and your toes. Because it's, it's really a thing. I mean, after you get used to it, you actually recognize that it's shifting into your toes where your balance is. And then back down. Keep that back nice and straight. You say something, Bess? I feel like I have prehensile toes now. They're <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's that. It's kind of the idea, right? The more control you have in your feet the more agility you have, just like a cat, right? A cat has so many points of control in their feet. So why they can do stuff that, you know, is amazing, you know, jump from one thing to another without any issues. And whereas humans, especially as we wear shoes that keep us from, you know, hard bottom shoes and things like that, we lose a lot of that, that connection to the floor. And that's why we don't recommend fighting in like combat boots unless you have a, a medical reason that that's better for you. To help with the various small muscles, Bronis, um, if you have a rebound or trampette, depending on what you call the damn things, you can stand on it and just go up and down on your rebounder, and it really, really works all the small muscles and really oh, helps them. Oh. So you're talking like a, a rebounder being like a trampoline or? Yeah, a mini trampoline. Yeah, okay. When Lily yeah. and um, was, she's a physiotherapist and she recommended that for balance and for ah. strengthening your ball muscles. Yeah, and then see, and that's what we're doing because now we get in our stance and we're gonna take, and we're gonna move all the way forward right onto those toes again. And again, as, if you guys get better at this, go ahead and lift that leg. So if we're here and I'm, I'm extended all the way forward onto my toes, I'm going to lift that foot and then I'll put it back down and I'll extend. Again, it's flat. I don't care. My back foot's flat. Lift it. But the key is to make sure that back is nice and straight and that your head is not moving. You're not moving up and down. So this becomes that rocking motion. 
and really push forward. This becomes that rocking motion that actually gets us that distance to our opponent. A lot of people don't use this at all uh, in a fight. And, and that is where they're losing the opportunity to cover or, or to cover a range that, you know, a throwing range for themselves. Also, they're missing the opportunity to use this to push tension into their opponent. All right, let's switch on the other foot, get the other funny foot forward or whatever foot that you just didn't use. And let's do the same thing. And get way out there. There you go, and then bring it back. I'm hoping that as time has come, everybody feels like they have more balance than they used to. Keep those shoulders, in, keep those hips under you, nice straight back. Make sure you're good and stacked, your body is nice and straight. Keeping it nice and stacked. Again, even just being able to do this, if you get anything out of all of this, this small transitions and the movement here, but keeping your body stacked will allow you to throw shots and be defensive better than ever. We know that when our body is straight up and down, that we are far better at throwing and blocking. But then in movement, we lose our good posture. So posture really becomes a thing. Just like Alfwin talked about before, about those closing in when people are fighting you. As soon as you're in closed in and those shoulders are rolled, you lose all those abilities to block and to throw that you had. So that's why these become important. All right, everybody feel warmed up? See Grimmer out there doing some squats. We have Craig today too. Nice to see you. You made a wonderful bench the other day. I love those big rocks. He's all worked out. <laughs> all right. Margarita, give me a thumbs up. You're feeling good. <laughs> All right. Ready to do some ladder drills? Yep. We ready for some ladder drills. Everybody ready to go? Yeah. Let's get some sweat in. All right. Start with our, our nice and easy one, two foot run. Remember, I want you guys to breathe through these. Normal breathing. In and out. If you, if you forget how to do that, then just, you know, if you have to whistle to yourself, you'll breathe in and out just whistling. The key to breathing is relaxing. So relax, sit and relax. This is a great day to get a good workout in. I think the best part here is everybody's getting so much more used to these now. That's the way, Margarita. That looks great. Nice, very good. All right, so we ready for the second one. Second one is our hopscotch. So. And again, breathe. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Whoa. <laughs> Explaining as much if you have one that you're like, no, 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 explain that one or explain it more. Let me know. Yeah, and then again, 
This is the time. We have a bunch of great people. Everybody's kind of learning how to run through them. They keep running through them even while we're explaining to people. So uh, if we have to, we'll put you on, we'll fix it, and then you can get back to good stuff. Or I, I see Bess flipping through her foot diagrams. If anybody wants to see one of those, I'm sure she'd be happy to throw it up on screen for, for any specific one when we get there. And I believe Abelard put a whole class together uh, and he asked for those foot diagrams and uh, I haven't been able to go through the class yet, but it might be something uh, that helps others as well. All right. I'm trying to get used to our new camera angle here. All right, so next one, we're gonna do our basic skiers. So this is just our open and bring back together. So it's do a drop step off to the side and gather. Woo, you're right. A little thing. So what I do with those, everyone, is as you make that drop step out, I, I push. Back up oh, to the beginning. I put you on the close oh, you put up. me on the foot cam. Close up foot cam. So as I do this step, I'm gonna make the noise so that you can hear it. I breathe out. I push the air out of me because this is the time you can burst. So it's like. And and we burst in those in those feet. So it's, it's really, it's just like, hey, hey, hey. and then all that air goes out and then you breathe as you set up for the second one. So this helps because it's the same breathing exercise you do when you throw. All right, so make, make sure you concentrate on that. We're, I'm gonna talk a lot more about breathing because I think it's very important for everyone. The more you can breathe while you fight, the better, better fight you can have. Nice job, Elfin. It looks great. And I see some people doing them backwards. This is a great idea. So backwards is the same thing. Thanks for the reminder to do them backwards. I think that was Sivri that I saw doing them, so that's awesome. Way to go, Margarita. Your head is, you're doing a nice job. Be careful, a little bit of jump, but not much. You're keeping pretty steady. That looks good. Nice, Grimmer, you're looking great. Big Fist, give me a thumbs up if you're, how you're feeling. All right, awesome. By the way, I watched some of your sparring uh, with Nessa and stuff. Your movement looked really good. All right, you ready for the next one or no? I still see a bunch of people. Yep. Let's give it a second. Everybody's kind of going through a second, third time, which is awesome. I'm glad you guys are uh, are working hard. Let's go ahead. All right. So now we're just going to do the the wider version of that same step, but we're going to get a little more, get lower in your knees, get a little more sideways motion, push off just a little bit with that foot at the end, so we go all the way across the ladder. Right, and again, you notice you can breathe right here. So if your foot is on one side of the ladder, most of you have been doing this long enough and get a little bit more burst. I want you to push yourself today. Bend those knees. The bigger, the more you have those knees bent, keep them bent and shoot. Make sure that you land in your stance. I don't want to see your feet together. That's it, land, your feet should be nice and spread. Nice. Server, it looks like you're having a little rough time with these today. Oh, you're doing them backwards, I gotcha. Not bad, Margarita. 
for you again remember what we worked on last time i really you're doing it better i'm going to push you to do it even better remember to hold don't don't reach so what what happens a lot of times we'll reach out and then we'll come over in this case what i want you to do is i want you to push that hip point you know point at the point where you want to land your foot and then lean to that point and then catch yourself okay let's see that one i want to see you to point at the point you want that foot to go that's better point yes you see how the weight should shift to that side before you lift the foot yes that's better getting a little better good we're going to keep pushing you this is the drop step this becomes really big when we go to throw blows as well all right so again you remember you can do these backwards Louis is going to show us. You notice he's literally moving before his foot sometimes goes. So, nice. Holy crap. Good job. Nice. Nice job, Craig. Those look really good. You're bursting right into those and your head's staying on the line. That's awesome. Head up, Grimmer. Let's see some straight shoulders. You're going to tower over me and I'm going to make you crush me. Yes, I'm going to push you that way. <laughs> that was like super sweet. <laughs> he is. He's moving great, isn't he? Video feed catch up. Oh, did you? <laughs> that. So I remember, and some people are doing these already, which I really appreciate, is that remember, you can go backwards a couple shots and then go forward and change this timing up, sideways, backwards, however you have to do it. All right? So let's break that timing up. We're not always going to just go forward and backwards. We're going to we might, we might shoot to the right and then shoot to the left, right in front of our opponent. All right. Okay. We ready for the next one? Yeah, and this looks like it's a hard one in that, in that kitchen. You're looking good, Craig. That's awesome. <laughs> He's ready. He's like, show me. <laughs> All righty. So now we're gonna switch over and do the shuffle step version of this. So one foot in, one foot out. I'm just gonna bring that outside foot in front first and then open back up. Still shifting the hips. This one is smaller side to side. That's it. And remember, you can do this backwards as well. So remember in this one, the idea is literally this foot comes about halfway point. If your one foot is in halfway here, this foot's in halfway. This foot will come in halfway, still point down the ladder, and then this foot falls out. Hip comes over. You see how my hip's over this foot now? Freeze that foot up, comes over halfway, falls out. Do you change your stance on each side? Uh, yes. uh, we're switching. Yeah, yeah we're switching. Incidentally, yes. You don't have to, though. Because, like, you, you can bring your feet to your normal stance. It ends up making it a little lopsided, but yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's how it is. So it's some of this may depend on how, what distance your opponent is. You should actually try to practice this um, in normal stance, in not normal stance, and in switching stance. You get comfortable with all of those. Yeah, if you want to add complication, we can find more variants. And remember, we can do backwards and forward a couple times. You can get down in those feet. Make it bigger. Just push that energy into your legs more. Margarita, those look much better. Nice job. That's the way, Angie. I like you're switching it up as you want. Wow. 
everyone's doing great. How you doing there, man? Yarn, excuse me. There you go, awesome. Those, you're really smooth. Those look really smooth. Nice job. Nice, Bess, you're just like transition. Oh, nice, I love it. I like everyone's really, now we're like breaking up the patterns. You guys are just moving as you need to in a fight this way. That's the idea. Really, really nice job. All right. All right, next one. I'm gonna add our, our angle into that one. So same one, but I'm gonna turn in. So I've actually got it where on this side, it's not that weird. When I go to the other side, this foot is actually further down the ladder than my left foot, which is backwards for me. But in the direction I'm facing left foot still forward, it's weird details, but I am facing in. I'm gonna take that outside foot, put it in the ladder, bring it back apart. It's the same move, we're just adding turn into it. And so the key is getting that foot to turn when you take the step. We're gonna do one more shot. Um, we're gonna do an overhead cam for real quick here. All right, so just so I'm gonna show you what it looks like on an opponent when you're trying to do this with an opponent. The, the reason why we move this into a 45 on either side of your opponent is for opponents that don't necessarily move their feet. Here I am, I'm gonna fight her. Now she's gonna move into the 45, right? So now I am twisting my body, my legs actually, even though my whole body looks like it's, you know, it's the same, my feet are actually square now instead of in, in, in my normal form. So now she can just go the other way. So now I'm twisted and then she can come back. Leg and, all day. Right, exactly. And as soon as she comes back, I'm turning and then I'm like, I'm not quite sure here. She gives me a little press and then she's around me before I get to do something. I'm responding to her. The idea here is I'm responding to my opponent. So she actually is in control of the fight at that point. So we're going to talk a little bit more about controlling a fight, understanding when you're the person leading the fight, because if you lead, then they're in response, which means that you essentially have in D and D you have initiative or essentially you're, you're one beat ahead of your opponent. So let's go ahead do the 45s. Again, you just have to make sure your foot turns into that 45 each time. And then back, it's good. That's it, get that back straight up and down, Angie. Yeah, it's better, straight up and down, there you go. Even if you have to look up, remember, just tuck those hips under you a little bit more. Yeah, she gets a little bit of these stuff in the middle and but then she, come back yeah, down. Yeah, she gets a little bit of that, right? Is it this yeah. yeah. Squat at the end. Ah, that's better. You got your hips back under you, Angie. That's, that's what I wanted to see. Thank you very much. Okay, we're watching. Good, that's the way to start it nice and slow, Murga. That way you know you're doing them. And then when you go forward, go ahead and give yourself a little bit more burst. There we go. Best, those look great. Your transitions are really nice. Grimmer, you're all right over there? Looks like you wanna talk. Oh, no, we lost him. And he's back. There you are. All right. Having, he must be having some trouble. trouble. Yeah. It happens a lot. Zoom is a silly program. So Siegfried, I want you to really, or not Siegfried, uh, yes, Siegfried, I want you to really get, get down into those a little bit. There you go. <laughs> there it is. Let that, like, literally your hip should be driving your, your, you're almost turning in space. Yes, that's it. You see how you're almost turning in space now? That's the better way to go. Abelard, you're looking good. Keep those feet going. Yes, that's exactly. Good. That's not what I meant to do. That low really hurts my quads. Ah, yes, it does. That's a thing. 
All right. Just watching Craig for one second, and we'll start on the next one. I see Craig, you're doing it nice and slow, which is good. That's the way. Yes. You can, oh, very nice. Yeah, those, those are just like right in same time with those feet. Very nice turns. Elfwin, you're good on these? Give me a thumbs up. Feel good? All right. All right, let's go. All right, we're gonna move forward into our three step. So one foot in, one foot out. I take a step forward, that's one. Bring them together, two. Open them back up, three. So what it really is, is you're stepping and you're just doing that shuffle step straight sideways across. Same shuffle step we were doing before where we were stepping with the shuffle. We're just adding another step in. Then you can do it backwards. Yep, and then if you want to do it backwards, you just take the step back together apart. One, two, three. And then the same thing goes, you can change those up, go back and forward. Nice, William. Those look great, brother. Oh, very good. So, Bess, you're doing the, and you could be ahead of us a little bit, but you're doing the over the feet. So, this is a shuffle and not the cross foot? We're doing the small this, this is the floor is lava, right? No. No, oh, okay, so I'm doing the wrong one. Oops. But that is one of them. And that's, it's it's almost exactly like this one. one. This one, the difference in this one is we take that step and the feet just come together. Uh, okay. Oh, three step shuffle. Yeah, 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 got it. Okay, this is what I've been practicing all week. Oops. Awesome. Floor is lava that you were just showing us is the next one we're going to do. I like that. The floor is lava. It's a way more fun name than, than we were using. Mm -hmm. We're not very creative with our names. Yes, that's the way. One of the people I was teaching called it a uh, uh, step ball change. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. And that's actually probably the real terminology for that. That's this is doing. actually a dance in the Wizard of Oz. And I'll post the link later. But I always feel like I'm Dorothy dancing my way to Oz. I swear to God, it's in the <laughs> Wizard of Oz. Well, you got the yellow brick ladder, so you're good. Like, <laughs> 100%, yes. <laughs> so, you know, if fighting, if you all get tired of fighting, you can take up dance after you this. Have is a, you have a future in dance. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks to ladder drills. <laughs> Very nice. That's better, Sivrid. That looks great. Remember, back and forth now. There you go. Good. Yeah, don't bounce up and down, Big Fist. Yeah, keep it a little lower in those legs. Come on, work it harder. <laughs> there, that's better. Yes. Good. That looks much better. He's being nitpicky. I think they bounced on the yellow brick road, though. Yeah, well, we'll have to talk to them. Well, we can't really talk to them anymore, but... All right, nice, yes. So just so everybody knows in this exercise, it depends where your opponent is. So if I have sideway in front of me here, this step may be, you know, here I'm gonna throw, I wanna throw something. So I take this step to get a little bit closer. I'll take this step to get closer. I have to be careful with that, that arm. So, so I might push to stop her from throwing, step, and then shift to her side. So the shield is naturally blocking and she's already shifted. So I'm gonna do that slow. So here I am, I am far from my opponent. I need to get in the range, I step, and then I shift over to the side. All right, so that's how something like this is used. You have to think about where my opponent is and then, then you can use and, and flow into those kind of things. So that and that same thing if, if I if I'm here I could literally step forward with this foot and then kick this over into that shuffle step. 
So, so that's how this is executed. Those are the timings to use it. The idea is that we're always throwing and moving offline. So if you're moving offline, it's harder for your opponent to hit you. Alrighty, so now let's move on to the next one. This is our cross behind, or as Bess has way more awesomely named it, the floor is lava. <laughs> so this one, I'm gonna start. I stand on the side of the ladder. We're gonna take a step forward to the next one. Cross behind, open back up. I'm all the way on the other side of the ladder. That cross behind lets you get more side to side motion. So the key on this one is to remember that you are in a place where if, if you're standing straight up and you're not bending to those knees, look what happens. I can't actually point my foot down that ladder and my hips turn. If I squat a little, then it's much easier to start getting this, this foot behind me a little straighter. So make sure you're stopping it. And again, my butt is literally falling into the spot I'm going. Here I am. I shift into that spot. And my feet change. And we're just trying to minimize any twist of the hips. And again, we're trying to minimize that because what's happening is we're shifting to the side of our opponent. So we still want to be able to throw a shot. And Ksenia, if you remember last week when we were working on all those like sideways diagonals where we were had the hips turning and then the hips not, this is exactly that. Abelard, those look really good. I want to make sure you, I, I want you to verify that you don't have any duck butt going. <laughs> all the duck butt. Okay, good. So remember everybody, that same thing. We got to concentrate on making sure those hips, you know, that, that, you know, when we're looking at these hips that sometimes we sit and we put our, our hips down, our hips are pointing, my hips are literally pointing to the floor. My, I put my arms on my hips, that's where they're pointing. We want to point those, we want to turn those hips up so that you can nice and vertical or horizontal with the ground. And, and as you squat, letting the butt go out is a very comfortable and natural thing to do. So we have to fight that natural. Yeah, aspect. so yeah, as she says, when a lot of times I'm squatting, look, I put my butt back. And now you can see my whole shoulders are all messed up. My body is not stacked any longer. Instead, I'm squatting. I literally almost squat into my toes. Squat into those, the balls of your feet. And that pushes the, the, that belt right into the balls of your feet. And it keeps those hips nice and straight. And that, that, that way you're, you're nice and horizontal to the ground. All right. Do, do, do. Next one. Okay, next one is four step. Again, super creative names. Start off to one side. I'm gonna go sideways into the box, spring together. Same thing out the other side. This is just shuffle, shuffle to the side. And again, you can change up the number of shuffles you want. You can also change it up forward and back. And you should be falling that way. You should almost feel like you wanna go more until your outside foot stops you. So be careful, make sure you ask, make sure your body is always straight up and down. It should be able to throw blows in between these. Very nice. That's the way, and as you get comfortable, go ahead and add a little bit more energy, a little bit more drop in your hips will actually add that little bit of speed. That's the way, nice, Craig, that you got the idea. Jan, yeah, I, I like you got really nice flow in those. You're like even finding it with your hand in between those throws. It's good. Nice, Gertulio. You're keeping, yes, you're keeping your upper body a lot squarer this week. That's good. Nice. Now go ahead and find that nice margarita. Go find that fall where you're not reaching, but you're falling into those feet. Yeah, fall into that feet. There you go. Good. Hips first. There we go. Hips first. Nice. That's the way. 
Very nice, Bess, that's awesome. Looking good. I like how you're doing it side to side on a ladder too to get that extra number of feet that you want. So if anybody's watching, anybody, this is how Bess is doing some of these. She can just run down that ladder. All right, this is really, this is used a lot. Uh, Big Fist sent me some video of him fighting and he was doing this exact thing in front of his opponent. So this is one of those places where really uh, you can find some really good flow there sometimes. And, and you can go from feet doing the shuffle to feet crossing over. And that feet crossing over here gets you a bigger movement. So if I'm shuffling, here I am, I get like a ladder. If I suddenly cross over, I get two steps. So instead of one step, I get two steps. And now I'm in front corner of my opponent, which makes it harder for them. And again, I have the initiative or I'm the one that's essentially one beat ahead of my opponent. William, that's really good stuff, man. Margarita, that, those are looking so much better. You're actually falling into those now. Those are really good. That's the way, Alfred. So Alfred, I want you to go ahead and push, push a burst into one of those. Get down into that and, and, and work it fast and hard. Yeah, to see, this is the idea as if, if you, yeah, that was better, good. Make sure you're not popping up. Good. That's it. Nice. Yes. Everybody, that looks great. Everyone's doing a really nice job here. Grimmer, you're looking awesome too, man. Very nice. These are probably one of the better ones that you do, I have to say. All right. Got a lot of questions on Facebook there. Going to the next one? Yep, next one. Okie dokie. Next one, we're doing our lateral in, in, out, out. So, face the ladder on the side. I step in, in, out, out. So, forward, right, left, backwards, right, left. Yeah, work them nice and fast. So this is a great exercise if you're in a fight. This is a really nice exercise. Having a calf thing? No, my wrist is good. Okay. Oh, okay. Looks good. So in a fight, this could be literally here I am, I'm fighting side, we're a little bit at range. I want to drive her energy up and see what she does. I have to be ready for her to respond with a strike because this is gonna drive energy. You're controlling what's happening here, really. You understand that she could go backwards, she could duck down in her spot, or she could counter throw a shot. But really, all I'm doing here is like, and in this case, you saw that she didn't move, but she dropped. So this gives me a better understanding of what is she gonna do when I do this next time. So if she does that, I mean, I'm gonna expect her to make that drop, and then she is stuck. Because she dropped in her stance, she's stuck here. I make a secondary move to the this side for the hook wrap. This is the point where you're controlling your opponent. She's responding to me, which means I have control. That's ultimately exactly what you want in a fight. You want to control your opponent. The more you control them, the more you have opportunity. All right, next one. Is moving away from her sword better or worse, or does it matter? No, so here is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is a tip for everybody out there. Um, I, if you're tired and you have to find a place to breathe, move behind your opponent's shield, away from their sword. So here she is, my sword, her shield. I'm tired. I don't wanna just keep going backwards because she's just gonna keep following me. I don't get a chance to, to relax here. So instead, 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin her down, and then I'm gonna be over here. I'm gonna shift to the side, and then I'm gonna shift back over into this shield. Because what happens is I'm using her shield and putting her throwing shoulder behind her. In other words, that's if she grabs, grab your little sword. I'm gonna grab my shield just so people can see. Here I am, she can throw a straight shot to my head. Now, if I can be just here, she can no longer, see how she has to really twist at angle turns. So what usually happens is they start throwing rotational shots. So now I don't care, these are easy to block. So if you're tired, roll over here and breathe as you're, breathe out as you're following in, into their shield because that gives you more breath and you just keep doing it and that'll give you more and more recovery time. And then when you're ready to do something, you think over here and you cut back and then I get the straight line shot. But one tip for everybody. If you are fighting a person that's much taller than you, this may not work. Um, this I found with, with a couple of taller people. Hey yeah. now. Exactly, I'm, I'm giving away all you, uh, Crank and, uh, and Grimmer, I'm, I'm telling everybody how to beat you. So she's much taller than me. Even if I move over here, look what she has. I cannot lie, I'm, I'm in a bad place. So instead, reach all the way over into the spine. Instead, <laughs> if I want to relax on a taller person, I step into here. You notice how, just like in boxing, I am crowding their sword. It makes it actually very difficult for them to throw. Because you're taking, if, and I'm gonna show you here, turn towards me, here I am, way down here, I step over here, look, look at those angles, she has angles all day long. But if I step over here, you notice that now it's really hard because my shield is in there, she doesn't have a lot of room to move. Yeah, and I'm super tall, so I can't just like right. underneath. Exactly. Are you so, hitting, are you hitting her basket with your boss? Yeah, you do. I don't hit it, but I mean, I, I literally just set my shield right into that hand. So here I am. I step here. You see how she has to pull her shoulder back? Now it's difficult for her to throw something. But you're not muscling it, right? You're just putting it. No, I'm just stepping into it. No, I'm just moving in reaction. Right, watch it. She's here in long. See it? She, she has sword is in a nice position. She can throw all day long. Right? Right. If I here, her arm is still free. She can throw all day long and her arm is longer, so it can reach me. Yeah, if I'm a Ready? If if I'm here, now she's like even even her, yeah, she's she's having a much more hard much harder time getting around stuff. So on taller people, by taking that distance away from pulling their arm into their shoulder, they can't actually push their arm out because they have a long arm and it makes it harder for them to show shots. So just be aware of that when you're fighting, that's a tip. I normally go to the shield side all day long because I want my opponent to throw rotational shots that I can see and make easy blocks for. All right. How would, how would you uh, deal with the two sticker in the same way? So the, the big piece with a two sticker is most two stickers are always gonna be throwing for your sword side. Nope. Yeah, okay. That looks good. Hold on. She's adjusting the camera a little bit. I'm trying anyway. There we go. I'm trying to get my like computer corner back out of the frame like it used to be. There we go. Good. So I guess a two sticker, what happens is I tend to take this line off with my sword. I fight him like a lefty. Right, because the most dangerous thing they have on you is your, your, your sword side because your leg is open, your arm, you have a very little blocking position to take. So I drop in here against them. What I want to do is I want to go away from their strong points. So I'll rotate into the shield side. You okay, Greer? I see you waving. I was just wearing the side. Oh, <laughs> all right. No, I, I can't see much. Right so now. here you are. What happens is let me get my sword and shield. Sorry, I'm blocking everything. Sorry. 
So now all of a sudden, if I step into that, that left or into their strong side or their right side here, so if, if side is the left is a two sticker, what's happening here is I'm shorting this side. Oh, sorry, I won't move. Right? So my first movement is here. So now she has a rotational shot that's easier for me to see with and block here. And this side is cramped a little bit. It's much harder to throw. If now that is, I, I tend to block evenly. This side blocks this half of the body, the shield blocks this half of the body. If I don't do that and I'm up in here, it's much more dangerous because she can fake me here and then throw to the head or throw to the head and throw to the leg. All of a sudden you start being in a pretty rough spot. So that same thing goes if you just run in and go ha! If, if you want to take something away in this position, the idea would be collapse this one and make sure that this is here for this block. So, um, but you can't just stand in, the key to this uh, two sticker is, don't stand in front of them, and you remember, don't let them have initiative. Because if you allow them to be an initiative, then you're just waiting to get hit. That's what you're doing. You're waiting. If you're waiting, they'll give you what you want, and that's not really the, the good thing sometimes. So just be, be careful about waiting for stuff. All right, what do we got next? Our forward in and out out. I'm facing down the ladder this time. And here, I'll move forward so I'm actually on the camera. And I go out to the side. In, so out, out, in, in, out, out. And remember what foot you started with. And the other foot. Ah. I think I would get that after six months. And backwards. Again, this in and out out is a really good thing to do in front of an opponent that's literally directly in front of you. In other words, they're standing on top of you, A range, um, hard to get rid of them. So the idea is in and out out allows you to, if I'm here standing, it changes. It looks like I'm going this way. When I take that first step, then it looks like I'm going this way on the second step. So now your opponent tends to go side to side or turn. As soon as they start turning, now I can actually fall out if I want. That way, what happens is they start turning or they drop because they're gonna try to pick up that low block and then you fall out and that gives you your range back. All right, let's see how it's everyone doing. Yeah. So when you get to a practice with somebody, what I'd like people to try on this one, and we're gonna, we're gonna try to make sure that as soon as you guys start practicing with people, that we give you some other exercises but if you have somebody to practice with, Sai's gonna do it here. Here I am, and now she, she wants to, me to get off of me, right? So here I am on her, and go ahead and do. Now you notice she changed that angle just by switching those feet. She can do it really slow. She gave this first one, I go here, and then I go here, and then she's away. That's side to side and go. So this is a great place to practice this in front of, 
you get a, somebody there with you and I practice it, right? <laughs> exactly. So, and the, and your opponent, that person that you're practicing with, can give you some feedback. But really, where the feedback is is what you're seeing them do, because that's what we're looking for. Remember, remember that engagement with your opponent. What you're looking for is, I do this foot. What did they do? Did they squat? Did they fall away? Right. Did they throw a shot? I don't care. I'm gonna. I, I don't care about any of those because I'm reading those. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, this this exercise is actually maybe better to do it slowly than too fast because getting too fast won't give an reaction. Right. If you do it too fast, it, it, I'm, I'm I'm guessing you're break, breaking up a little bit. If you do it too fast, then you 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 don't have time. They don't have time to respond. Right? Is that what you're saying? So the idea is, if I'm standing, if this is especially if it's a person that doesn't see well sometimes, and I do it this way, look, now she, she just moved her head a little bit. Never moved her body. I did it too fast. Yeah. New, newer person isn't going to pick up on stuff the same way. Exactly. Instead, I go. All of a sudden, now they can catch that a little bit. So now, there you go. Right? So I did it a little bit faster, I know I can get it. With a good opponent, just a tiny minutia move out here, they're gonna pick up really quick and, and, and respond to it. There you go, so, so she moved back. My next shot was inside leg as she stepped away. Right, because I read it. So she's gonna do that again. I moved here, I moved here, she started back, I'm slide throw inside leg, because that's the leg that was forward because I was able to read, she told me how to hit her. We have to learn to read our opponents. They will tell you how to take advantage of them. That's the key. What we're learning here is stuff you should never have to think about when you exercise it. But what happens with your opponent is something you look and say, I saw something, I wanna try to see if I can take advantage of it. All right? All right. All right, let's get into some jab jumps. So I'm in my stance facing ladder and we're just doing our, our little bouncy boxer jab step. Circles falls in, fall out. This is the idea, is you're, you're really getting that, that place where you can shift in between going forward and going backwards much faster. Now I switch to my other foot forward and go the other way. Make sure you're not turning that foot in. Again, this is one of those steps that you can really practice with an opponent in front of you. Just give them a little quick jab forward and then all of a sudden and jab back and see what they do. Right? We're reading what our opponent's going to give us. If you, if you throw and you look down at their, kind of give them a glance or tension down into a leg and they just collapse in place, you know what they're going to do. You might be able to take advantage of it. If they run away, well, then that turns into which way did they run away? If they ran straight back, that might be a jab, jump, and then fall. So, so here we go. I'm fighting an opponent. I give side a jab jump and she falls away like this. So I know something now. I push some different pressure on her and then I go back to this. I give her a jab jump, bang. Then I just do a passing step and throw and hit. That long range passing step. Because she told me what she was gonna do, I made it happen again. And, and then we have you know, the next exercise that I know we can hit them with. Nice, Margarita. That's the way. Jan, that looks good. You're doing a really nice job with balance back forward and back, by the way. Petulio, very nice. 
And it's good, you're sinking into it a little, I don't mind that at all, because a lot of times when you sink into the front of that jab step, sometimes you can convince your opponent more. Nice, yes, that's good. So if everybody's watching, Craig actually goes ahead and does, he does a couple of these and then he does switch foot, right? And then he does a couple of these and switch foot. Switch foot. Nice. All right. Now we're gonna do switch foot. So one foot in, one foot out, and you switch them. You go to the next back, switch back. Nice. All right, Margarita, I want you to watch a little bit. You're sitting back in your steps. We're gonna go to the foot cam real quick. So what I see here is, I'm gonna step it off so you see. What I see is the feet are way forward and you're just switching the feet forward. I'm gonna get a little higher. Pick your tunic up. And I'll pick my tunic up. Tunic obscures the leg. That ain't the right one. That's the right one. Thank you. All right, so what I see a little bit of is you're, you're kind of sticking your, your, your way back and you're just switching here like this. Make sure you balance yourself right down the center and then you switch it. Your, your balance should be 50-50 on both feet. All right. Yeah, 50-50, yep. So you should feel like you're almost jumping up in the air and switching your feet. Right down the center. And pretend to throw a blow with that. Okay, like you're holding a sword and you're getting ready to throw. And that is show you how you, yes, that's better. You're almost putting more pressure on that front foot now. That's the way. So that's gonna be the critical part in these is that this switch foot is literally made to switch and throw that hip forward. So now all of a sudden I go from my normal stance, right? Where my hip is a little farther back to forward and now I can throw something deeper. This is another one of these places where you can put pressure on your opponent. So if I'm fighting again, side, if I'm fighting side again, here I am, and I, she's pretty comfortable. She's like, I can block all of this stuff, right? And then it's like, I do this. Now she's not so comfortable. And you notice she immediately turned. Right, so then she immediately turned and shifted and fell into that back foot. Yeah, I immediately just exposed the leg that was threatened. Right, so for a taller person, this would be you're standing here and you're looking high and you maybe push down a little bit here, you switch and you can literally throw an overhead J shot. And it's next to impossible for them to block because I'm here, normal J shot makes a nice block, right? Or even if you're fighting somebody on the ground, normal. That block would be right there. I'm gonna have her hold a shield and show you. Here I am. You notice I can't throw this. Now I do this. You notice I can. So I'm here, I can't. I'm here, I can. Right, for a taller person, go ahead, stand up. Now she's taller, I'm gonna throw that J hook to the leg and go ahead and you're gonna make your block. 
This is it without moving my feet. But all of a sudden, I throw here, and now I'm way behind. Opens up, wide open. So you have to understand that this is a nice shot to throw. So now I can just do this. Here I am. And then they have to respect you a different way. Hey. See, now they're not sure what you're doing. They're, you change your stance, which changes all the throwing dynamics. And that person has to do something. And so we're learning what they're doing. So we're talking about a lot of things today about probing your opponent and seeing what they do. That's fighting. All the top guys talk about that, girls and guys talk about. That is fighting. We just don't go and throw technique on people. We don't grab the toolbox and say, I'm gonna grab the wrench. No, that, you know, that didn't work. Grab the screwdriver. No, that didn't work. I'm like, I look, oh, that needs a wrench. I go get a wrench and then I use it. That's what we're doing. All right. What do we got next? We got bigger jab jumps. So this is our two forward, one back, or really just bigger forward, smaller back. However big or small that needs to be for you. So this really becomes the dropping step. And breathe when you drop. And then backwards. Switch feet. It's a hard working day. I see some people sweating, which is good. I'm so much better at these now. I couldn't do it before. Keep that head nice and straight. I was really concentrating on breathing out as I, as I hit that back step. And then I started concentrating on making sure my head was like perfectly flat and I felt smooth. That's the way, Gutulio. Now I want you to see, get some burst off that front foot just so you go farther back. Yes. See how there's almost a little hop in there? Yes, that's it, exactly. Nice job, good, you're keeping your head on the line too, that's very good. Margarita, you're turning your body slightly. Try to flatten up a little bit, there you go, good. Remember, don't turn your toes in when you do this because then you're not gonna be in your natural stance. Now again, if, you, if that is your natural stance, I don't mind. Just make sure whatever you're doing that you stay in that stance. And you can tell me, don't worry about it. I, this is the way I fight and I'm okay with that. How's everybody starting to feel with these? Yeah, those look really good, Ethel. That, that, yeah, I like your, your, your practicing double up, double back. Those are really, really nice. I, these are, I've used these um, already. We had a little sparring session and Louis is a very, very, very good fighter. And I was able to do a long jab on him and throw the offside hip. Um, uh, and, and I had to do, I just did the long, I did a short jab and then I did a longer jab to get me to distance for that. So there's definitely some ability in this. There's definitely some opportunities. Uh, that longer jab could be something again that could be, depending on how far your opponent is away from you, that's, that's, that long, that's how far you need to jump. But, you know, and you can, you can just practice. One good part is if you have your opponent, and I do that long jab, on that long jab, I could literally throw the shot, pin the sword, bang, and then drop into something else. Okay? Or I could jab, bang, and then come around. 
I, so when you have somebody to work with, do this. So I've now it's side turn. There she is. She's gonna jump, pin my sword. I'm gonna block because I have to. And now, see, now she can do that leg, right? So the next one, she's just gonna move, move around. She's gonna do the long jab, pin, and then move. Good, let's do it again nice and fast, all in one. Yes. So, so when you get somebody to work with, build on each exercise. So in that one, we're doing the long, we're doing a long jumping jab, and then we're doing the cross back foot roll out. So she added two things together. So there's, that's the idea is to add these things together to develop something that works with people. What you develop may be something I can't do at all, but works for you well. But you're going to find that out, right? Your timing, your sword work is going to be different than mine. We're giving you the tools to put together to create a better style for yourself. So keep that in mind, okay? All right. What? What's next? Turning step. Last one. All right. So this is our weirdo crazy one. Uh, trying to figure out which way you can actually see. All right. So I'm in my stance, I'm facing the box. I'm gonna take my back foot, put it in the ladder, flip around into my stance on the other side. I'm gonna take my back foot again, so the same foot. Point it down the ladder, spin around to the other side. And I just end up right back in my stance every time. So it's a three-step move. One, two, three. One, two, three. And that one is always back foot in the ladder. If you have to, think about it on the ladder when you're doing this. Is that back step steps right in like a cross on that ladder step. And then you roll back. Again, what we're working on here is making sure we're turning our hip and our body with our with the turn all in together. And also what's happening is I'm shifting backwards, now I'm shifting forward, so I'm changing my, my balance of my body. And that, that becomes a key in this exercise. Then when you go for round two, line back up in your same stance oh, and start with your front foot. So this time the front foot will lead every time stepping in the ladder, spin around in your stance, other side of the ladder. And so you guys know, this is actually, for me, for some reason, this is the hardest step for me. Um, I, for some reason, I don't control my balance as well. So I tend to get too much motion going, and then I want to bring the foot too far back. And the reason I tell you that is because not everything's easy for, you know, even even though I may be showing this stuff, it, it's not easy. I'm learning, I'm trying to get better at stuff as well. Like that one. <laughs> if you've got oh, all of it in your normal it. stance, switch to your other stance, funny foot forward, and do it all again. I cannot get my balance. I keep falling into the back. Okay, sure. falling over. I wonder if it's because my toes, if I turn my toes, then I fall into my heel. I think that's it. This foot, a lot of times what I'll do is I'm here. Mm -hmm. And then when I turn here, I turn here. And then when I bring this back, I fall this way. But if, so what I found is if I'm here, I plant this more on the angle, it feels like it's better. So what we want to remember in this exercise is this is all mostly about, again, changing, shifting your body. Uh, but it's also about making sure we're turning our toe depending on which way we're going. So in, in a case where a side may be fighting me, 
She may want to rotate one side. So when she turns, so I'm here and she turns over here. And then as I turn towards her, she can still do that or go back the other way now. And you can see how she's just turning, that foot goes to whatever angle she has to fall into. But if you don't turn the foot correctly, then it becomes very difficult. You end up running straight lines and your hips aren't in front of your opponent. All right, this is the water time, so get, a, get the rest of these in. Practice the ones that you have most trouble with, um, and then go ahead and, and change, maybe to the back. Now I'm going backwards. Now I go forward, and I'm changing. Now I'm going backwards. Switch foot. So the biggest piece we see a lot in the SCA is, is that most of us, all of a sudden somebody does something, we fall straight. We fall straight back, we fall straight forward. Um, maybe we do some on the sidelines. Very good people you'll start seeing falling into different 45 degree angles. You know, I used to watch, I'd be like watching a fight, I'd be like, there's a guy who knows how to work his feet. He's falling into angles. I could see him tracking angles. I'm like, okay, so I have to watch because I know he has good footwork. So now I know more about my, the person. So now I can go ahead and say, maybe the feet aren't gonna be at all, but maybe I have to add more pressure up the top. I have to take advantage of maybe quicker shots, better range control, whatever. But maybe his feet are just good enough to be able to keep him safe against me. For others, what happens is they don't move their feet. So all of a sudden somebody moves over here and they twist and then their feet change and then they twist back and their feet change. Or they just literally twist their body. I look for that all the time. If I can get on the outside of a foot, I know I have a hook wrap that will go beyond their shield. So I'm, today I'm talking a lot about things to look for. And it, things to look for is what's important. We're, we're developing these movement tools so that we can be safe and we can move and we can roll with our opponents easier and that we make sure our balance is really good and we can have, we can do movements that allows us to take advantage or at least be safe in a fight. But the next piece is movement by itself is not gonna win that fight. What's gonna win is being able to see what your opponent's doing. Now, for some people, that's very hard. So for some people, you literally have to say, I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to hit this and now I'm going to see what they do. Or not even that. I'm going to do this and see what they do. Did they go backwards? Did they go forward? Did they throw a shot? I don't care because I'm ready for all three of those. But I know what they're doing more now. So next time, I give them a jab and I come back. If they squat, then I might give a jab and I shift over here and throw that, that hook wrap. So you kind of know what your opponent's doing so you can build on it. So that becomes a really important part of building a fight. If they, if I do that jab and, and, and step over here, why did they block it? Was that shield way across their body? Was the shield down here? And that meant maybe their head was open up here? Then I, I think, okay, now I can, I can get back into defense and I'm thinking, where was, where did that person do? What did that person do, right? I have to, you have to, the more you're comfortable with your movement and your guard, the more you're able to analyze what your opponent does and how to take advantage of it. So keep that in mind when, when you get a partner. Take that partner, work, just pick one exercise, like go through this whole list and say, okay, let me try this on you. All right, let me try this on you and you move like you're gonna block stuff. So maybe that person, I do this and that person moves sideways. I'm like, okay, that's fine. So now I, I know how that feels because you, for a lot of you, you haven't had a chance yet to feel it. 
So, so that's a big part here is to get that chance to build that fight to to feel it against somebody else because there's that builds that connection with somebody. The faster you can build that connection, the faster you can figure out their timing, their distance, their range with their shots, their speed. All of those things become things that we have to learn as fast as possible so that we can use all the techniques we have to you know, negate all of those things and, and build a fight still for ourselves. If we just ignore all those things, they're gonna take advantage of us. So we have to, you know, sometimes I'll jab foot and if that person throws a shot right away, which pretty much I'm waiting for, that tells me they're a counter shooter. In other words, as soon as I move, they're gonna throw. So that means if I was to actually throw a shot first, huh, he could be throwing offside and hitting me because I never stopped to make sure he wasn't a counter shooter. So by, by making sure that you do something to your opponent, you can find out if they counter shoot first, because I walk out there and I throw that leg shot and he throws you offside, I'm in danger right away. I don't want to be in danger. So maybe I walk out there and I fake to throw that shot and he throws that right into my sword. I'm like, okay, now I know you're a counter shooter. So now I fake, he throws into my sword and as he's bringing his sword back, I throw it to his leg. All I do is change my time. So the more you understand your opponent, the more likely you can figure out how to defeat them. And that's what we're trying to talk about here. Is it, this is, you guys okay? I'm, I'm, I don't wanna, I'm kinda in the weeds a little bit, but I want you guys to understand, and you don't have to understand the first time. I'm giving you, go ahead. I'll tell you one thing that's, that's been with, I've had a hard time with is making that transition of, okay, really looking for someone else's shot. And so that's one thing that I've had to really work on is the, okay, I don't care if I get hit, I just need to know that I'm looking for what they're throwing. So, you know, okay, so it's that driving the car uh, analogy again. It's the, I haven't gotten to the, okay, exactly what I do against that, but at least I'm looking to observe what they're doing first. And that's, again, that's just, you know, okay, just doing the drills like you're saying, but the next step is, okay, I'm going to get hit, but I need to know I'm paying attention and paying attention right rather than making that jump automatic. You can't make the jump all the way up to, okay, this is the next thing I'm going to throw. Right. And that's, and that's a big part is I, we're, you know, some people say, okay, I know all this stuff. I'm just going to do it. Well, just applying something doesn't actually mean that you're going to do it or that that person, you're going to hit that person. So you, again, we have to build a fight and that's what having somebody else that you guys get one person, another person to fight with, they're happy to work drills, but they're going to be happy to just put on helmet with you. So the first thing you can do is, and what we've been doing here is even like me and Louie have been working on let's put three different or four different things together all the footwork to build this fight and then he'll run through them four or five times and it's like and we'll he'd be like okay here's the first part of that one you know here's the first second part of that one so he's a one one two right and it could be literally one two three four so all of a sudden, we just go through each step and we just do one step and keep compounding those steps and building. Because some people, if you don't have, if, if you don't have this first one, going to the second one is useless, right? So instead I build, it's like, okay, that's good, I got it. So your right. kata is like? Yeah, kind of like a kata, right? So, so now, and we have reasons we do katas. Katas are meant, they're not just dance where a lot of sports take or a lot of martial arts take them. Katas, is, katas are literally, I do a punch and a block, right? Same thing's happening here. I am doing a jab to put them into pressure. As they drop or go into pressure, I roll around. I throw to pin them into that corner and I cross step to throw the outside leg. Right? You see how we're building that? And to be a good, a good partner, make sure that you're not taking everything away from the person practicing. Allow, just stand there and allow them to do that. Jump, step, he steps, I turn, they counter step, right? Let them do that. And then later, 
you apply in na in natural ways. It's like, okay, let's speed that up a little bit. I'm gonna apply. It's like he, he gives me a jab step, right? And then a cross step, pin, and then bang, bang. And I might turn and make a block. But at least now he has that feeling of what the fight organically starts feeling like more. So, so that's how we're building those katas together. We're putting lots of steps together. And then when you're comfortable with all those steps, even if I don't get this on this cross step, I look, I'm like, oh, look, I'm gonna add my fifth step is gonna be another, what is that, triangle step? Bang, offside. Because they blocked that low one on my fourth. I saw the upper part, so I'm gonna go ahead and do another triangle step and, and hit him on the offside. Right? So, so we're building through that. We're able to see it. We're getting comfortable with the movements against somebody, and then we're able to execute. All right? So let's go ahead and try that first one against our pal. Sorry. And actually, like me, Louie, and Sa have been working on, on adding and building kind of, like, and, and I'm glad they said it, right? They are kind of katas, right? You know, we've been working on building these so that we can see, and we talk about it. We literally go through, it's like, what would the next, you know, what would that next step be? And we talk about it, we're like, okay, let's try it. And that way you're both working on something. And, and the good part is you're working mentally, you're working on stuff. And now fighting is becoming a chess match. So that's what we're working on. All right, so let's try the first kata. And in fact, it's just the, the one I've been showing you. And we're just gonna do it against your, your dummy. I'm gonna turn a little bit. There we go. Here I am. So like we did before, here we are. I jump. I may pin here. In other words, hit their sword. Or I don't. It doesn't matter. So right now we're just gonna jump, cross foot, and then triangle step, and then throw. But first exercise, jump step. If that feels good, I want you to add the second exercise. Jump step, cross. Remember that cross looks like this. I'm gonna do it slow. Jump step, this foot slides behind the other foot. Right, and I change my hips to face my opponent. So that's the second step. Jump, cross, okay? And then the triangle step is this foot, here's the triangle. Right now it's back, I put it forward and bring the other foot back. So I guess my opponent, here I am here, I put it on the other side of my opponent. All right, we're gonna watch you a little bit. Sivrid, make sure your shoulder's tilted a little bit forward, okay? Could just be the angle you're at, but I want to make sure. Nice, that's the way. And if you want to add sword throws into that, that is perfectly fine, I don't mind. Just make sure that they are going to those good angles that you should be throwing them to. Angie's has to work around her chickens. <laughs> she has extra footwork to do. <laughs> That's awesome. So so go a little bit a little bit less. So jump forward, cross foot, right there, and now triangle step, big triangle step that way. There you go. Okay. Still. Go ahead, try it again. A little too far. A little too far. Like to properly do a triangle step, I don't want to be further. Too than much that. more than that. Or take That's your jab. Like teeny tiny. So we're learning here. Take a jab step a little bit more into the angle over here. That, that's another way to cheat it. Yeah, but it's taking away my shot. So it's actually I'm literally going. So I might turn. So so make sure you're still pointing. I'm this person. So jab step with your foot right in between. Now I'm standing up here. Now you swing foot over here. And so now I'm over here. And this is why the cross step is going to work. It's going to turn. Still too far. Okay. So let's do it again. Long step. I'm going to turn with you. Just don't don't worry about game. Let's try this without game. 
Jab. Right, now cross. Now step out. All you're doing is stepping over that foot is the big piece. So even remember, Bob's not moving. No, he doesn't. Right? But our opponent is going to move. I think somebody, somebody ping us? Uh, I have a question, Baron. Uh, All right. So I am OK until the cross step, but then I'm not quite sure how to get from the cross step to the triangle step. Uh, what's happening at the moment from this camera uh, is that when you have the when you or someone has taken the cross step, uh, their feet are right behind the bob, um, so we can't actually see. If that's better, thank you. So let, me, let me do it this way, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually have her do it on me just so you get. And she had the same. So everybody knows she had the same issue. She's like that triangle step actually doesn't put me in the right space because she's gonna do the triangle. You see, she's back kind of back in front of Bob. When you're fighting an opponent, that opponent's gonna move. So I'm going to be the opponent. Here I am. She's going to do the jab step. Bang. Here I am. Now she's going to do the cross. I'm going to turn with her. Now she's going to do the triangle step. See how she Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes much more sense. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yes, it should be changed, right? Whatever. All right. So, so your opponent's going to turn naturally. Don't worry about the bob too much. Your opponent's going to turn naturally. The good, what, what you're really doing on that triangle step is you're literally here. I am. I, I'm here. Now I'm doing a big switch foot. <laughs> really. And now you got a big hook wrap. Okay. So again, she's going to do it with me. Let's switch sides so you can see it. And I'm just going to hold the sword. Here's, here's some of the places you could actually pop a shot in to pin me even more. So go ahead and hit the sword. Okay. There you go. Do it again. So, so see how she, she probably took a little bit too big of a, of a cross step and got stuck there for a sec. So now we're going to do it again. It doesn't help. I was a little forward. So she was right on me. Right. Hey. Just a really weird weight transition. Yes, it is. No matter how big or small my cross step is, I'm going. I'm here, and then I have to get. Then you have to you have to shift feet. Yes. Like I have to suddenly get all the weight over here yep. to push. So let's try it again. So it's a real slow transition. So think about throwing that blow on the next one, just for the hell of it. I want to see if that transition helps you out. No. Let me see if I can do it. There we are. Oh, you're right. Ooh, I want to. I want to switch my foot across the front. Ready? But yeah, it's it. So understand. It's a, and she's 100 percent right. What happens in this? You got a. You got a triangle here, to, and you're landing on this back foot. So this to make the triangle step is is a really that change takes a little bit longer so beware so if something don't feel good like that you could try it different you could change the form or the, the kata so maybe i change it bang right bang bang so instead maybe i do a crossing front foot step so go ahead and throw so go ahead Bang outside. Now take that front foot and come back. Yes. Does it feel any better? Yeah. All right, do it again. And throw that hook to the leg. Exactly. A too close to you. Yeah, I was finding that if you do what we call that, you were calling the TikTok step earlier, that also works really well as the last step. Okay. So, so this is why we're we're kind of going through adding steps together is I want you guys to feel and Angie, thank you for asking that is I want you to feel what feels good to you and what doesn't. So the good part here is other people are finding other steps to take maybe a TikTok step. You want to try a TikTok step? There we go. It's the same thing we were doing, just with forcing more turn into it. More turn into it, right? I mean, what is a TikTok? If it's just like jump, yeah. Front. Yeah, it's a cross in front, kind of gather, jump, right? So, yeah. And so, so what's happening there is, uh, and and side head is that TikTok step. 
tends to be that same thing, but we're doing more of a gathered foot, so we're like kind of jumping through. It's it's a cross in front. You're just adding more turn. Right. So so again, so here we work together, and and we learned that what I first told you didn't work very well for a number of people, and what we did is we changed it, and and that's the same thing me and Louis did with some other striking stuff when we were in the backyard trying to build a couple different exercises together. We were building katas and then, and Louis was like, okay, let's build a list of katas and then we could go through them until you're comfortable we teach you of them. And, and that way you can get a little more organic through all the different movements. And we could also make sure it's like, all right, that, you know, that triangle step doesn't work very well. I'm not going to do it anymore. So that's the idea is that it just doesn't work well there or it doesn't work well for one person it may work well for others that have different body dynamics this comes into if you're a little you know if you're a little taller maybe it works well because you got giant long legs right so this goes into that piece of of helping somebody how to figure out what they do for their body better right we talk about that all the time uh you know helping people do stuff for their, for them. Don't matter if it's a man or a woman or somebody tall or short or heavy or thin, you're gonna be a little different all the time. So that was our first. So the next piece is, I might say, okay, Sai, I want you to think of what the next shot is after you do those, those first four. So we got, we got a four, four piece combination. She's gonna go ahead and, we have three piece our three piece combination. Well, you get the jab, the fall, fall, and throw. Okay, yeah. Four, three piece. So here we go again. She's going to take that first jab. Bang, pin. She's going to move over here. She's going to do that step hook. Now, what was the next one if I had made this block good enough? You got it. Exactly. Right? Is it? You want to try that one? Back step. keep being cross steps of some sort until we take a break. Right. Because it's really hard to change between crossing and not crossing. Right, or, because of weight shift. or let's think about, think about it this way. How would you be de defensive after making that throw to the offside leg? I would be. Okay, let's see what that <laughs> looks like. And then fall up, right. Okay, so in that case, what happened is she added a four step of just dropping back and doing a passing backward step. Okay, so now we've added a fifth step to it, or four steps, excuse me. So the idea here is that you have to think about each of those steps by telling what feels good, not only feels good to you, but also where, you know, what your opponent might be dangerous with. So in, in martial arts, the way that goes is she does that first jump step, bang, she goes sideways because I'm gonna start throwing, and then she's over here, as I turn, she throws here. As I turn, she throws back, she actually does a cross step, throws back to my head. So, so all of a sudden there's a ton of reading going on there. You know, there's, there's, you can find what you want to do. Instead of, maybe instead of that cross step, she just goes away as I try to throw her leg, she takes her, she steps away like our fourth step was earlier. So, so you're kind of building what a garnet, or organically a fight would be like. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that a couple more times, and then we're going to go ahead and try a different, a different kata. We'll make up another one for ourselves. We're going to watch as you guys go through these, these last ones. There we go, good. Yeah, nice cross, throw offside, and then hook underneath. Very perfect. And then fall back out of ink. Yep. And then fall back. Yep, they're good. Bess, how are you feeling with these? Are you getting okay? Yes? Okay, good. I want to make sure you're doing okay. Good. So Bess is doing one that, and we're going to work on Bess's next just because uh, I, like, I like the idea she's working here a little bit. Nice.
Let's see, Gatulio, let's see. I want to see what you're doing here. Let's see how yours looks. Nice, good jab jump. Good, nice. Good, and you just literally, yeah, that's fine. So you're doing that literally, you're doing actually a triangle steps, probably because it feels a little better to you. Oh, no, there, and then you did shuffle. Okay, good. So be careful, Gatulio. I want you to keep your sword always coming back to guard. You Right now, you're dropping your sword, so if you throw a shot, you're throwing this shot, and then sometimes you drop that sword, so it's like bang, and you drop, and then you throw, and then you come back across, and you throw, and you drop. So be careful of dropping the sword all the time, because it becomes a habit. I'll throw a shot, I drop, and then they throw. So if I'm gonna do that jab, long jab step, bang, right here, my hand stops here. I don't pull my hand down. Keep that hand right at their face. And then I do this shot, bang, my hand's up here. Or even if it comes down here, it's here, and then it comes back up on my next move. Bang. Because you want it to come back to your throwing form every time. So be careful about allowing that sword to drop and be down here, because you have to pull it up to be in a position to throw again. Hopefully that helps you a little bit. So uh, there was a question of how does this work left-handed? So again, the piece on the left hand of this is that you literally have to work. I'm going to make side go to left hand. Or actually, I should make Louis go left handed. He is left handed. <laughs> so, so Louis going to attack me. You okay? You're yeah. okay. He's going to do it slow because his arches are hurting him today. Um, so Louis is going to. I'm going to get a little closer so he doesn't have to jump so far. He's going to throw right into my sword like the normal jab step is. Bang. So now he's going to go ahead and do that cross up behind him and get around me. Look what he's throwing. He's throwing way off. He just hit me in the backside. Now I'm going to turn because I have no clue where he is and he's going to go ahead and sweep across and do that. And now he's throwing to my other side. So for a lefty, this is even worse on your opponent. Okay. Uh -huh. You want to try it one more time? Here I am. I hate lefties. Here we go. He pins my sword, bang, and he shifts, bang, hits that shot, and then I turn, bang, hits the other shot. Does that help? Yeah, that's what I thought. It's even worse against the lefty, so uh, I, 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 we'll, we'll make a right-hander out of you yet. I didn't tell Ron Ball didn't hate him. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> so, so, but that was a great question, right? So we just went through that, and you could see we had to step through that. And this is what the good part about having an opponent and somebody to walk, help walk you through stuff. Good. Gutulio, I want to see you go ahead and throw those now. I want to see where your hand is real quick. So we'll walk through that exercise and then we'll go on to the next one, guys. There, nice. Much better. And get that hand back. Good. Good. You notice those shots become better too. Better angles. You're, you're in a, the same... So the more we throw our hand from the exact same position, the more likely it's gonna be accurate and with power. If we put our hand somewhere that we're not used to, then we don't know how to develop the power the same. So this is why when we throw something, that hand has to come back. We look at, listen to Duke Sean, he's, he's more concerned about your return than he is about your throw. Get that return back. That return is a block and a throw. So the idea is, I throw, I return. I throw, I return. I throw, I return. Back to position. The return is very, very important because it allows you to set up the next blow. All right. So our next one, go ahead, Bess, do that, uh, the one that I was, we were just talking about. So Bess is working on one. She's throwing a jab shot. And then she's just working an easy crossover and fit and fall away. So that's essentially three different movements. Okay. So she's on her right in front. This is almost like your, your, your I'm, and I'll do this right. I'll have side do this right in front of me. So side's going to be right in front. So we're going to take the jab step out and she's going to throw right. Like she's going to throw for my arm. And then you're going to sweep across and hit me in the, in the backside. And yep. So you're gonna you're gonna fake right over in here. Bang! Pin my sword. What? So so pin. Bang. Or wrong way. Pin. Bang. Just like kind of like what we did, but now we're here. So 
give me hard, give me a good push and pin. So Bronis, I'm also not looking to pin. I'm looking to hit on the short sword shoulder inside. Like right inside my sword and shield. Yeah. Like you've got a really defensive apron, but if that was open, like if your sword was more up and down, Here she, I am. Can come, she can come right in. Yeah. Come in tight on that. Right, that's hit the shoulder. Um, so cross your front foot. And then cross the here. You could show me if you want. Okay. So this is my bob. So here's the shot. I hope you can see this. Into yeah. the shoulder, cross behind, back, and then hit my desk and hit bob. And remember, she's funny foot. So if you yeah. want to. Go ahead and do this one with your with your sword foot forward. Bang. Make sure you get that hand all the way back, Bess. Good. So you notice that she's doing a fall away shot with this second shot. That keeps her safe as she's falling away. You just have to make sure your timing is right that you don't lose power. Bang. I also do this if somebody is throwing at me and our 90 degree shot would work. So if they're throwing at me with their arm, I can do our, I can pivot the arm, hit their arm as it comes out. So it's a pow and out. And it's one of the arm shots because if their arm is coming out like this to throw at me, so here's this arm <laughs> coming out. <laughs> then if I'm like this, the 90 degree shot brings me right into the angle of the arm and down and I can I can get the arm. You know, that's one of those shots I have never been good at. Uh, and other people what, throw pivoting? the pivoting to arm shots. Oh. I've seen other I've seen other Louis Louis throws that you throw that a bit, don't you? You go to arm shots, inside arm shots. Yeah, just pivot, man. And if, if you're pivoting on your toe, you have all the momentum behind your arm. It's awesome. So, like, so I can't react fast enough. If the shield was open uh -huh. a bit, and I can block, and then oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That, that's pretty advanced though. I like that one. It's like a mullet. Okay. Ooh, okay. Double lift. That's, that's what she was doing. So there you go. Great. Right. And throw. Bang. Right I'm going to hit that. you in the face constantly. I know. Okay. I'm putting this up here just so you block. Or, or just leave me an oversized gap. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Ready? Hit the arm. Ready? And bang. Bang. Good. Do it again. And then fall away. I'm going to come over a little more. Bang. Throw. Yep. Good. Do it again. Throw that second one a little faster so you're, you're a little closer before you fall. There you go. Good. Nice roll around, too. If you throw a switch foot with while well, you're throwing that first one and taking a step and throwing, you can just throw that as a switch foot throw and then step around. Yeah, you could totally do that. And like, like do the back step. So like switch foot real quick. Well, the first one is a switch foot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Actually, it almost lines you up to their shoulder. Yeah, it put me right in the back for this for yeah. that step around. Since Bess was starting with that foot already, yeah, forward, now she could just pivot she could just pivot it. right away. Yeah. Since we're starting and with her foot forward. We're... Exactly. So there's an example. So Bess starts with her foot already forward. For somebody that's funny foot, maybe they throw the switch foot in first. So she's gonna throw the switch foot, bang. She ends up funny foot throws, throws and falls away. Okay, so do it again. Good, do it again. Yeah, and fall away. Oh, you're never gonna one. get that target ever. Yeah. Which one? This. I don't know. You're good with Bob. Is it? I'm going super duper slow and still almost missing the other arm. That last one felt pretty good. Oh yeah, I like it inside. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. I have to practice that, man. I wish I could get that time. Because from here, there's, there's nothing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think what, you know, the, the point here is I think what we're doing is we're learning together. Do you see, this is almost trying, trying to get to a point where like, we're all together here trying to learn how to throw different kinds of kata or different movements into a fight. And, you know, it's kind of like being together at a practice, like, okay, that didn't work. Try it this way. Or, Hey, you know, Bess, what are you doing? That looks cool. You know, it's, it's that idea. It's so, so Ben, yep. There you go. You see the difference best between your angles? Like one way you're not pointing at their shoulder, the other way you're pointing at their shoulder. It's, yeah, I can see why it, with a standard stance, not funny foot, hitting when the arm comes forward is hard for you. My knees are all effed up and twisting. But when I'm in my stance, funny foot, I can just, I move my hips and I'm, I'm square to my target, which in this case would be the arm. Right. Better, you're actually leaning the way you're going to fall. Yeah. yeah. It's a stance thing, I think. Well, and, and it's and it's really it's so it's not only a stance thing, but it's it's again we're adding. So for us, we change it up. So we start with our normal stance, do that quick switch foot throw and fall your way, and then get back into the way we want to do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, we're, we're using tools to be able to do those things that you just showed us why it works better that way. Nice. I'm trying to go straight in and I'm not getting everything done. So we're going to like triangle step. Yeah, but you like paused after that and then went to the next one and I'm trying to go through and therefore I'm gone before. Oh, before you can throw the next shot. Oh. Yeah. And I just before you can throw the first one. Yeah, and that's, so, and, and Sai, so here's, here's an example. And you guys, uh, go ahead and speak up if you're like doing something and you want to ask questions, because this is the place to do that. Um, like Side was just going through an issue where she's actually, instead of, she throws the first one, but she's falling through the second one. So it's hard to throw. Oh yeah, I did. Sometimes we're trying to eliminate the pause between moves. And this time when you eliminate the pause between the moves, you also eliminate the time to throw the shot. So, so, so that's the idea is that we're working together to talk about how we feel about these and how, how it, <laughs> she just did it again. So that's, she's actually working. There you go. That looked better, right? Yeah. Cause I'm it. basically doing a triangle step and I was just. And falling away too fast. And exactly. All right. How's everyone else feeling with some of these? Go ahead and give us some feedback. I want to, I want to hear it a little bit. This, it's, it's your turn to be on. Elfwin, how do you feel on some of this? Friends. No, it's good. Um, I, I remember talking to Penzik when we were there last that I'd gotten very linear. So yeah. being able to get myself to use the angles more is awesome. And I was just doing the 100 day Pell challenge thing. So yes. when we talk about this at practice on Sunday, I would then roll it into my daily Pell thing for the rest of the week, trying to come up with some of these uh, <coughs> processes or whatever. Um, so no, it's been working great. Awesome. Yeah, I, I you know, like I said, I, I, and I don't know if uh, it looks like he had to leave, um, but um, one of the guys that was here earlier, he had uh, his his night. They're all uh, vac. They all had the vaccine. He was fighting uh, his night's lady, and um, both of them been in our classes, um, and they were moving so organically in their fight. I was like. It was amazing to see. And not only were they moving organically, but they were bursting into blows. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was like, and, and it's hard because they're like, how do you think I'm doing? And you could see the times when they got back into their old form and then where they fought, it fell into the new stuff. And I, I literally had to point out a couple of spots. And then she went back and looked and it was like, oh, I can see what I'm doing. You're right. You know, and because what's happening is you kind of forget how you did things and then you roll into new, better things. And <laughs> well, and adding opponents starts becoming a different animal uh, because the hard part here is you're going to have people track you because, you know, if you're fighting somebody that has good movement, they're going to track you. But again, if you have better movement than they do, they're going to, okay, you track me this way, but I'm going to change it up or I'll change the timing and then create something out of it. Um, 
but the biggest piece is trying to create that connection and and staying with them if they're sliding sideways you're sliding sideways so your sword and shield are in a perfect space right mm -hmm. and because if you don't slide or you slide too late they may have a better angle than you yeah yeah so this last little kata i was trying to figure out was okay let's change all the ranges from out of range to c range to a to b to c ah, you know, that's so that great so I'm moving in all and up and down as well. So I'm going leg shots and head shots and, and armpits and stuff, trying to get all the different coordinates in, into the system. And others are just going to get into a different rut. Yep. And and so you know that's a that's a good example. You know, it's like so we practice a lot of the times we we'll practice these things in the same range. We're only learning one range. So you know, for everybody, think about one of the 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 katas you did, but I want you to take a step towards your pel so that you're actually you know, feeling almost too close, and then do that same sliding away kata. Well, even when you're like you're doing your triangle, and one triangle, I would go one, and I would I would go sideways, but I'd also go close and bring it into a range, and then when it's coming back the other way, I would I'll fall back just a little bit as well, pull yes. it back into b range, right? So it's a very small change, but yeah, but I'm hoping that you know it'll click, right? It'll stay somewhere. Yeah, and those are the types of things that actually, so it's a small change, but those are the types of things your opponent has a, a lot of difficulties with. Exactly. It's, you, you go from being close to extending a little bit, now your opponent doesn't realize that range changed because you're in movement. It's hard to tell what, a range change while you're in movement. When you're close, the angle changes are crazy. Yes, they are, good. That's the idea. So you might have to think when you're closer, you might have to think about some J hook, especially if you're taller like you, you're gonna have to add a little few more. Uh, you're gonna have to pull that elbow into your body. You know, like we worked on last week, maybe instead of I'm throwing here, you're throwing here, right? You're pulling that elbow in. So you shorten that distance, right? I'm just demonstrating. You're just demonstrating on me. <laughs> or you, you extend past me, right? So here I am, you might extend past me and throw it over here. For a taller person, extending past something gets you a different a, a, a opportunity. So that's why you want to change that distance between you and your pal. Well, for a taller person, you're going to have a lot of times where you have to purposely make your hand go further away yep. to get the range correct. Because if you're standing right on top of them and just go, huh, you yeah. get to actually taking away your own shot. You have to leave it up here. Exactly. You know how she's creating distance by going up. So if I come here, I'm, I'm actually not going to get a very right. good time it lands. And like the, last week, we were talking about what part of the sword we're we supposed to be hitting with, right? That top part of that sword, top six inches. So all of a sudden, instead of I'm here on her, sorry, she's going to throw create range by throwing up and hitting me with the top of the sword. Out. Or out, right? Or if I'm here, she's going to pull that elbow into her body and, and throw it, right? And throw it right here. You see how she kept her elbow inside the body, but still hit me with the top six inches. Becomes your T-Rex sword. So yeah, exact. That's the way Grimmer. So you might have to practice that some more because you know people want to get there on you, right? But your your joy is going to be making them pay. All right. Somebody wants to step in on you like that, you make them pay. Because you can. I don't want a T-Rex sword. <laughs> you just bring that elbow in and go all T-Rex with it. <laughs> you can I have it. one, but it's because I'm in my dining room slash, you know, computer room. You're right, you're making it work. So that's the best part. Oh, there's our T-Rex sword. If you actually make the T-Rex noises, you get the bonus of your opponent being really confused for a second. Well, it's, you it's I even have a question today. And I don't know if this would work. So I, I was fooling around with it while we were talking. It's the long when we jump two steps forward and a step back. I ended up doing something and I don't know if it would work. So I'm gonna do it really slow and I'm gonna I, I'm asking you guys. Oh, so I love we, this. Start, we start, we go two forward, one back, and then I was like, wow, yes. here I am suddenly here. Would that work for anything? Yes. So yeah, I mean, so I, I guess let's try that, right? Louie, you want to try it here? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Good on pole arms. 
So you're like, it's like hit the booger booger, just kidding. And then pass. Yeah, she, she, you, you just nailed it. Yeah, this is, this is exactly, let me show you what it looks like on my end when pressure wise. So I, I, maybe not for everyone, but I can definitely think of opponents where you do this, they're going to freak out. See, I'm low. I'm making a block. And you yeah. might even Bit, right? But then I back and then off. I'm like, oh, okay. So then now I'm relaxed. As they commit to so, going, oh, I'm coming after you now. Or or they don't even commit to coming after you. They literally yeah, relax because you're going away. So she gives ways. me, I'm here, I'm relaxed. Look at my sword and shield is really low. But I know because she can't hit me that easy, she's far away. So I'm like, okay. And now she gets me really hyped. Oh, right? Sorry. We're yep, back you, to the beginning. Yep. So she gets me really hyped. Hey, throw it. Hey. Uh, except I'm doing right? the wrong step. There we go. Bang. Oh, okay. So, so what happens is I'll do this quite often, by the way, is I'll relax somebody. And that's what you're doing on that step back. So I make that long jab, 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 hey! See, now she's like, oh, and then I'm like, here, and then I relax. I, I literally breathe out. And, it's going away. I'm safe now. Right. And, and by breathing out, you're actually, your opponent's like, oh, I can breathe now. Right. And then I just fall into it nice and relaxed. Again, the fall in on a relaxation. I'm out here against my opponent, and I'm like, I'm going to do a passing step and hit you. Ready? She's ready already. I didn't even do anything yet. <laughs> so, so now I'm standing right here, and I go, hey! right? And now she's, she's thinking, I'm going to hit you. Now I'm relaxed. I'm like, oh, bam. You see, I breathe out and fall right into it. You, you have to also look relaxed. OK. <laughs> Help them relax and then take advantage of it. I'll do that in a fight. Here we are. Trick them into I'll be fighting. I'll be like sense of security. I'll be pushing. I'll be pushing. I'll be pushing. I'm like, bang. All the time. Right? Right in front of them. Because I relax. They want to relax because that's their time. And then you throw. So that's exactly what you're doing with that shot, Bess. So that was that was a good example of, yes. of working together and really getting. Awesome. Yes, it was awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a good example of not only did we learn, ask a good, great question about, hey, would this work and how it works, but we also went in detail of how we use relaxation to build a shot. Right? Because I probably would have never got there because we we're just going through shots. We're not talking about relaxing and what you can do with your body to your opponent. But relaxing your body is almost natural. Your opponent will relax their body. And then, and then if I relax, and this is a good one to practice. It might be, here I am, I tension, and then I relax a little bit, and I just shift and fall. And then there's a burst at the end. There's a one-inch punch at the end of that. All that energy in one spot. This is that type of thing. It's exactly what Bruce Lee does. Okay, he's, he's smooth and relaxed, falls in. He's like, you know, he's like here he is. Hey! Right at the end, all that energy at the end, all that relaxation at the beginning. All right, so this, that's, that's a really, really good fighting uh, thing to remember. I mean, it's, a, it's something that we all need to understand is, you know, and, and Sean, you look at Sean's blows. Sean's relaxed until he hits somebody and then he falls right back into that relaxed. Because it's easier. And when I say relax, relax isn't 100%, you know, I'm going to take a nap here, right? Because your opponent's going to hit you while you're taking a nap. It's, I'm going to fall back from 90% back to that 20, 30% of, I'm ready, but I'm relaxed. I can, my, my arms are not down here on my side and I'm relaxed. It's, I'm energy, I relax, right? Now I'm relaxed. I can even move while I'm relaxed. I'm not using much energy here. I think right? that's also a very SCA thing. Like when we're fighting, we fight, fight, fight. We both take a pause, we, you know, and then we fight, fight, fight. So if you can trick them into taking the pause and you're still fighting, um, then you're taking advantage of, as you say, they're relaxing because that is what happens. We fight, 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 we break, you know, and then we re-engage. It happens, we don't, and it's the same with blows. We, we move, 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 stop, throw, move, 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 stop, throw. Same exactly. 
Interesting. And adding an even more complex subject to this, and I'm only going to present it here, and I've talked about this before, is that same energy that that, that same relax is, is, is used with the, Euro, the Eastern European tension, controlling somebody's tension in their body. So here I am. I'm going to get her tension up with controlled tension on my end. Don't know what's happening. Now I'm relaxing, even though I'm moving, and she may be... So, so there's tension in that body. She's holding her tension. I am relaxing and I'm still moving. I'm like, I'm breathing here, right? I can tell what we've been doing is working because I'm I desperately just trying to break out and be like, no, I'm cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so the idea is I'll hold people into tension. It's different in a fight. It's a lot easier to make me tense up in a fight. I missed that one, Abelard. Let me, hold on, let me read it. Uh, actually, if you read it, Beck used to <laughs> what was clearly a shoulder warm up while explaining that he was just stretching his shoulders. Beck would he would do this big warm up thing where he'd rotate his shoulders around and he'd yeah. look really relaxed and he'd explain to his opponent that he was just warming up his shoulders while slowly moving into range, and then he'd just yeah. throw out of the out of the circle out of the warm up. Exactly, because. He relaxed his opponent. His opponent would lean back and fall out of guard. And yep. And Leon had been called. It was good. Oh, good. Yeah. And that's that's the big piece. Is later we're going to take and and we'll talk about it more in depth later. But the to warm up your shoulders after Leon. <laughs> the the next one is pushing pushing energy into somebody and making them. Yeah. You know, I used to, how I started this originally is I get somebody I work with them and say retire. And then notice I'm breathing out and I'm pulling back in. I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm trying to get to the point where they don't have a chance to breathe yet, right? And I'm breathing because I'm talking, right? And now they want, you notice she's backing up because she wants to create a space that, that she can talk, that she can breathe in. And then I stay right on top of them. So what's happening is I'm holding tension in them while I'm breathing. They're not getting as much breath, which means they're not getting as much oxygen in their system which is slowly breaking them down. But she can take control of that fight away from you by coming into your space and forcing you to react to her. I, mean, I can try, I can Okay, talk. not him, but like other people. Yes. Yes, other people. Yes. He's, he's, jumping, he's like, hi, you're dead. <laughs> right. Or, okay, so, you know, not him, but it's, theoretically. It's, we just but, run into each other. But even more, Bess, like, no. 100%, watch. If, if I'm here and she wants to take control, now I'm walking backwards and I'm breathing. And she's using all kinds of energy, right? Now, for her, for her, it may not be the same, right? For her right now, she's doing a better job breathing and controlling that. For somebody else, what happens is at some point, they're like, I'm going to take control. I'm going to throw a shot. Well, what are you doing when you're throwing a shot? You're using energy. What are you doing when you're pushing the movement? You're holding your breath. You're not, you're using energy. So I'll go from pushing energy on them, keeping them tension. They're like, okay, it's my turn. And then and then they're using it. I let them use some of that energy. And then when they're they're throwing a couple shots and they're done, what what do they do? They start backing up. And then I stay on top of them, right on the edge. They never get a chance to breathe. So this is Mexicans. Mexican boxers do this essentially by just constantly going forward and throwing blows. They take a beating for, for 12 rounds, but they're used to it. If you do the Eastern European fox, uh, boxers, what's happening is they, they switch over here. All of a sudden, this person's like, holy shit, what's going on? And then they'll switch back over here. Then they'll switch back over here. You know, here we are. All of a sudden, they're, they're like always like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? But I am in total control. So I can breathe while I'm doing that. And they're holding their breath. I'm breathing. I'm winning air in my system, oxygen in my system. So let's talk about that then, oxygen. Because when we talk about um, is a fight a road, like what are you training for? In practice, we go for hours. And so yep. you need to have good aerobic capacity to be able to fight for hours. A fight, generally speaking, is a few minutes, which would be more anaerobic because it's explosive. So what do you train for? Do you do like your hit stuff 
or do you do your do your aerobics training? Even our stuff. Yeah, hit stuff is a key, right? Because even here, we're you know even in these things, it's like burst, slide, and we're finding times in between those. It's like steady state long haul cardio is good for very little. <laughs> See, I have been a, a proponent of the hits because what are you practicing for? Are you practicing for practice or are you practicing like aerobically for fighting? And I want to practice aerobically for fighting. So I've been doing hit stuff. No, and, to give you guys practice, but, but, but up to, and down and up and down. Right. But to give you an idea, I mean, I had a 40 minute fight in heroics with, with Lucan. Oh. Right. And this is, you know, and, and, but, probably 15 minutes in, I'm like, maybe I should throw some shots, but it's a heroic <laughs> champion. So am I there to win or entertain the crowd? But for that whole 40 minutes, you're not running around like a crazy person. But in, in that 40 minutes, we came off both drenched. Yeah. But again, so- But you weren't going to- Right, we weren't, we were But if you want to be at practice now for the last last two years, I we, we do this now. We do three minute rounds all the time. I'm always moving. I'm, you know, I'm like, it's I'm literally- annoying. I'm pushing, I'm pushing, you know, and this is literally what, what, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm literally just kind of keeping moving, right? And I'm finding breath in my movement. I'm doing all that. It's, it's no different than a runner. So here I am running and I'm like, guys, right now, someone's right next to me. And I pick up my pace, right? And then I slow it down. He's, he picked it up for me. Ah! Then all of a sudden they're like, hey, that person's like, uh-oh, I'm going too fast. My heart rate's too high. So they slow down. Now I pick up my pace. Oh, shit. Now I got to go fast. So now who's controlling whose heart rate? You see what's happening there? So that same thing happens in a fight. And because we're doing the, the hit mentality, I'm changing that speed. You notice when I'm, I'm flowing with her, you notice there's a lot of bursts, and then I might, I might switch up and I may slow up, and then I may, I may move. You see how we're changing speeds? And we're learning. This is why I've been really talking to you guys about breath. Because these are the places. When I do that jab step every time, right? I'm breathing inside all of those. If you can do that better than somebody else, think of how fast you're going to wear them down. Especially if you can make them throw into your shield. Sometimes when you got a really patient fighter, I'll do this. I'll be like, they're just standing, I'll be like, right? I'll get underneath them. And I'll let them throw, bang, bang, bang. And then I'll break off, and then they're like, oh, the fight's over. They'll start walking backwards. And then I'll stay right on the outside edge. Notice I'm on the outside. And then as they turn, I go to the other outside edge. I'm resting going forward. I'm actually breathing. It's easier to breathe, believe it or not. Easier to breathe going forward than it is backwards. True facts. It's funny, but we're so used to breathing, going, trying to breathe going backwards. But that usually means that somebody's pushing you back. Really, the secret is it's easier to breathe when you're controlling the fight. Exactly. And that's usually going to be when you're moving forward. The other piece is who has initiative here if I'm walking? I'm breathing. I'm pushing. But now, watch. I want to take a breath. Look, now she has initiative. So where, where, where would I rather be? I want to own it. Even if I'm not going to do anything, I can still own it. You notice I'm always pushing to the outside, ain't it? Because, because that keeps them thinking, keeps their head going. If I push right here, they don't have nowhere to go. They can just, this is what they want. But if I'm here and I go, oh, they got to turn. Oh, they got to turn the other way. No. Now they're not sure which way to turn. Well, and I never get to just stop and set up and do what I want to do. Does that make sense to everybody? You see why there's constant movement? I'll give you an example, yeah, and this will be the last will, thing. Will take it. I will give you the biggest example of how a fight starts and how it should start. Here's how a normal fight starts. On Leon. Leon. 
I am going directly into her power, her best defense, her best offense, right? Why do we do that? Instead, I'm way out here. Fight starts. Look, I already started to fight. All I did is move sideways. Look, now they're, they're like, oh, look. So I'm just changing angles, and then they don't know. And I'm learning stuff right away already. I'm learning how they turn. I'm learning how they move, what their range is. Do you see the difference between the, and I'm gonna go back. Here's a normal fight. <laughs> Not sure, right? I didn't, I don't know enough to know if maybe their hand speed's super fast and I don't even know yet. So I'm giving away all that. We can't give, we can't afford giving that away. Al Anon put it this way once. There is no shot clock in SCA fighting. I do not have 30 seconds to throw a blow and kill a guy. Build your fight so you understand it before you make it a mistake. The more you understand the fight, the less mistakes you make. All right, that's, that's the key is we have, if I push over here and she turns over here looking like an offside, I'm like, oh, okay. I'm not gonna do that because that's what they're waiting for. So maybe I do this and she, I, I know they're gonna push and then I throw on a counter time. While making sure you have that. While block. making sure I know I have the block. Or, or maybe I push, I fake it. And they don't know every time it's like, now they're not sure. So now they're really not sure if they can throw it or not. And now it'll be like, bang, right on the elbow. <laughs> well, shit. Sure. Right? Because you're breaking down their confidence of, of what they normally do. Normally, guy per, person pushes to this side, I just throw this side. All right, this person pushed over here, but blocked over here because they didn't really throw. So, ha, huh, ha, huh. it's like, okay, well, that's not gonna work for me. Ha, huh, bang, good, I, they think it's not gonna work for them. It's not gonna work anymore because they're thinking about it. I can take advantage of it. But if I just go in here and go, Bang, and they throw. That's, that's gambling. You're not here to gamble. If you're going to, and people don't understand this, and I say this all the time, offside is the devil, right? <laughs> and, and I say that, and this, this, is, this is mostly, and, and wrong goal too. And we will throw these, but you have to make sure they're incredibly safe. But offside, it's not a go -to. what is open? Everything. Okay, and, and no matter what, if I throw an offside, even if I freeze them and then throw it, they can still throw an offside. That becomes a gunfight. Do you want to find out if you're faster than the other person? It, it's, it's not, yeah, you got it. It's, it's, not, it's a gamble. We're not here to gamble. Instead, if I, if I start with a fake over here and they start, okay, that's a good fake because they didn't immediately go offside. So now, Sorry, what was I supposed to do? it doesn't matter. Okay. I've learned. I learned that, okay, they're not gonna throw it offside. So maybe I can throw that out shot to the elbow. Also, when I throw offside, I tend to throw offside low in front of me, instead of offside high where my arm is exposed. So if even when I throw the offside leg, it's bang here for the block. If I throw this, bang, right? I'm really off, off balance. So be careful with offsides. This is the same thing. Lefties throw this, righties throw this against lefties, and it be, just becomes wrong ball or hitting you in the armpit over and over again. It, it's not a nice day. Okay? Yeah, but don't, instead- Don't do it against wrong baller. Instead it's against wrong baller, I'm here on his elbow. Wait, this is my sword now. Here I am on his elbow. So if I can get his hand down a little bit, now, I don't have to worry about that offside anymore, right? But if he drops his shield and keeps his hand up high, now I'm like, he's gonna block. I don't have anything over here anymore. Now I fake over here. So now, now he starts getting this cross motion going and it becomes, it becomes difficult for a left-hander. But you notice I'm just not throwing. I'm building something first. Really what I'm trying to do is make that person get into a place where they bring their shield back and then I'll hit him in a leg. Because I'd rather hit somebody on the on side. It's much safer for me. 
So the, the, the real focus there is don't take a chance. Don't take a chance by just stepping into an opponent's range and hoping that you're better than them. You don't know yet. In fact, that person might not be better than you, but for that one instance, they are. But they've got a real mean offside. That's right. From, from their this stance. Go in here. Walk off to a side, put some pressure. Put some pressure. Put some pressure. I pressure all four corners of the box. Not only do we have a box in front here, right? You also have the back of the you box. You have the back corners of that box. It's a 3D box. This in person corners. is literally in a box. So I'm gonna pressure the back side of that box, the front side of that box, back side of that box. So think about that and you wanna push. I don't wanna just stay in the same place because that person don't care anymore. I push here and if, and if they lean or turn, then I push over here. Now they have to think, now I push over here. That's how we have to build that fight. We're learning what they're, they're gonna reply to us with body and with motion. And you make that, that connection allows you to see those things. Health one would like us to know it's called a cube. It's cube, you're right. It's <laughs> definitely a cube, thank you. Okay, engineer woman. <laughs> So, so I wanted to cover just making sure today, really the focus was on building something. The Kata thing was really good. Uh, and really who pushed me into that one was Louie. Uh, we worked on stuff a lot, like step-by-step. Step. Side was really good at pushing me into, I don't, let me do one thing right first before I do the next thing, before I do the next thing. Yeah. And, and that really helped her. I was her. trying to pile five things together and, and none of them go correctly. Yep. I don't actually get any better. <laughs> yeah, and then Louie helped with, okay, let's do this thing. What's the next thing? And, and that's how we built that fight. And that's how I wanted you guys to see today because that's how we can build, you know, we actually had three or four people do different things today and was like, oh, that's a good idea. Let's try that. Oh, let's try to switch foot, throw to the shoulder, fall to the arm. Hook, that's a great another one, right? So, so we were able to, to try some different things and learn, and that's really what practice is about. Um, but again, focus, good breathing. Uh, tension work is gonna be a little bit harder. We're gonna work on that more later so that you guys understand it better. It's, a, it's, it's not easy to understand. Uh, it's not going to be a one day thing. It's okay that you don't understand it right now. Um, we will work on it. I mean, you know, we didn't understand footwork right away. So I've had footwork way before I did. And, uh, and it took me a while to learn it. So, um, you know, that's, that's, that's the point. That's why we're here together to help learn, help each other learn. So I know I've learned a lot through this, but you know, uh, just between teaching the great questions, stuff that you guys have been doing, um, the idea of being short or being close to your pal, working through the ranges, you know, we didn't talk about that, but that's, you know, man, is that fundamental? That's, that's a great thing. We don't think about it all the time, but it is. So, so, you know, it's another tool that we all can use better. All right. All right. Hopefully everybody had a great day. I know I did. I, I learned that today was probably one of the best. I learned a ton. I thank you guys, everyone for the input, because that's to me, that's what makes this practice so different is it almost felt like we were all together practicing, especially when we hit the kata piece. That was kind of cool. I'd love to see some more of that. So uh, let's keep it up. And, uh, uh, you know, if, if you get a chance, I'll see if Saib, Saib I think, labeled all of the, uh, the videos on uh, the broadcast videos for on Legio. I'll see if we can figure out how to post. Virtual fight practice topic tag. Yeah, if you go to the virtual fight tag, if you go to the topic tag, take a look at the first one. See if you remember the first one you went to. Or, or just search virtual fight practice. Yeah, and, and, and try to remember and look at how, it, how everybody does, because we'll, we spotlighted a lot of people through those. Look how everybody's doing compared to what they're doing now. Because I think, I think it's a good thing to review how you looked before or how others look that you remember how they look and how they look now. Because uh, you know, through all that work and all that time, sometimes we don't appreciate the tools that we have. So uh, it, it's always good to review and, and learn to appreciate those tools that you build. Uh, because I know personally, all of you are moving. I mean, 
I, I William, I can't wait to see him and fight him because uh, his movement is probably some of the best around. Uh, and but everybody, everybody's really, really looking great. Awesome. Wolfram and uh, Sandra said that they'll have their camera back next week. So we have a few other, other people that uh, are on the side here watching. I'm not quite sure how many. Uh, I just want to see. Can we do a view with everybody? I just didn't dare put the camera on because I'm still recovering an injury and I thought it would make me kind of deliberate. I think, oh, I'm sitting here. I'm going to have to do something. So I've been very good and I've been a bit gentle and I'm going to try something out with the camera on next week. But that nope. thing, the last thing, I have done so many fights and so many tournaments just going straight at people, and you see it from that angle, and you just slap yourself in the head and go, what was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess. Exactly. Well, I as well. That's exactly. So so we're just looking, and now we're looking at different ways to approach a fight, and, and that's really all I want to do with everybody is help you understand how to approach that fight better. We built a lot of tools. Let's let's work on approaching breathing and all of those pieces. How do we approach our fights better going forward? Using our adding our mind into all of those physical things we've been doing. So let's keep up with the the, the input. I, I loved everybody's input. Abelard, I love that you did. Uh, you're doing a class and you grabbed everybody's other stuff and you you put it in there. That was excellent. Um, Wait, is this class viewable? Yeah, he posted it in, uh, you have the document uh, in, uh, I think he posted a document in the chat. PDF is in the chat. Um, the uh, the actual class I didn't record, but I might record this week, if assuming that I do it again. Um, okay. Friday night. Uh, I'll let you guys know. How did, how did your class go, yeah. just so everybody knows? Yes. Uh, it went pretty well. There was um, the usual, hey, let's teach people some footwork, which... I'm, I'm sure you can't relate to it all. Uh, um, the uh, there was some fumbling around, but for the most part, it went well. Awesome. And thank you, everybody who 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 comes to these because this is where I learned how to do everything that I taught in that class. So. All right, all right. Well, I'm going to let everybody go. Um, a huge thanks, to everybody um and keep up the hard work you guys uh, it, it's really super super enjoyable um and uh, proud of y'all I, I i can't wait till we all get meet face to face soon oh yes yeah, I, want to say, I want to say thank you to everybody because having everyone here and having a bunch of other people to do this with makes it so much easier to do this rather than even just watching the video it's not the same as having someone you know okay hearing the coaching to you but not just you to everyone else you know you eyes aren't just on you <laughs> so no thank you to everyone else i really enjoy all your company oh i agree same this, here this has been awesome guys yeah this is awesome thank you very much it's it's fantastic all right we'll see you guys next week Thanks, folks. See you later. everybody stay safe <laughs>